Okay, am I, can everybody hear me okay? Great. Well, uh, good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen from Bayer, from IITA, and probably a few people from the Gates Foundation are also joining us today. You are all uh, welcome. If we could go to the next slide, please. I would just like to, okay, let me go back to that. That's, that's right, that slide there is fine. Just to make sure uh, anyone that maybe doesn't have the agenda, this is our agenda uh, for about the next one hour. Um, we're going to have some comments from the leaderships. Uh, sorry, my name is Ken Dashio, and I'm in Ibadan, Nigeria right now, at IITA. And you can see the list of speakers that will be uh, presenting um, over the next one hour. Uh, Sanginga from IITA, uh, Asiedu from IITA, Mike Graham from uh, Bayer, and then uh, a team of Bukar and Stella from IITA and, uh, and Bayer. And then we'll have some time for question and answer. We go to the next slide, please. And that's me, but we still go to the next slide. So I want to officially welcome everybody uh, to this uh, launching of the IITA Bayer Partnership called Modern Breeding Project, and it was funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and also the general support from Bayer. Actually, Bayer is volunteering their time and energy and resources to support the breeding programs at IITA. Greatly appreciate it. We go to the next slide, please. Um, the project uh, brings IITA and Bayer together in a private-public collaboration. I think that's obvious. And it's a very productive program that has been operating for some time already, actually, very efficiently with cow pea breeding. Um, it drives efficiency in the breeding program. We estimate it leverages $1.2 million of kind, in kind support from Bayer. Although my guess is it's probably a lot higher than that, but uh, that's the estimate. And it enables IITA to rapidly incorporate the tools from the Excellence in Breeding platform, part of the CDIR. We we'll go to the next slide, please. So just a few ground rules. Uh, for this morning and this evening and this afternoon. Uh, please, uh, when you're not speaking, your microphone should be on mute. Uh, speakers should all please keep the time, including myself. And I'll give a one minute warning. And let's see how I'm doing. Yes, I have one minute to go. And uh, now we're going to have uh, speakers, like I've said before. we. But the questions and answers will be at the end of the, after everybody speaks. And so you can be writing your questions down or you can be putting them in the chat box. And when it comes time for uh, question and answers, we'll refer back to the chat box to see what questions are there. And then uh, you can also ask a question by raising your hand. Um, if you look at the, uh, there, there, I don't know how to say it, but there's a, there's a symbol that looks like a hand. If you click on that, it'll raise your hand. And that way, uh, you know, at least I'll try to look and see uh, and call you to ask a question. We can go to the next slide, please. So thank you very much. Next slide. The next speaker is uh, Dr. Interania Sanginga, the Director General of IITA. And uh, actually, just uh, this morning, he was called off to an unexpected assignment. So uh, he asked me to uh, give the presentation for him. So uh, sorry about that, but uh, this is what he prepared. And he coached me on what I should say. So uh, if we go to the next slide, please. And the title of uh, the presentation is IITA's mission. Why is this project important? Next slide, please. Well, IITA's uh, global mission, or mission for Africa, is transforming African agriculture. And 
Of course, I think we can understand that is we want agriculture to be transformed into a modern agriculture, an agriculture that is highly productive, an agriculture that is mechanized, an agriculture that brings dignity and decent incomes to farmers in Africa. And we won't go into details, but agriculture in Africa is not like that right now. It is uh, characterized by farmers living in poverty, farmers having low yields, farming not using farmers not using mechanization, etc. And the farmers in Africa are growing old. And that's why we see a picture here on the left of, of Dr. Sanginga talking about agriculture to children in school. We need we really need to start them early to learning about agriculture. We can, uh, so we want to see how this uh, project with Bayer and IITA is going to help transform agriculture. Next slide, please. And actually, it's pretty straightforward. Um, this partnership is going to increase, the, or going to, going to do, have capacity development for IITA crop breeding program. And when we say capacity development, it's in the broad sense. It's capacity development of processes, capacity development of people, capacity development of equipment, etc. And this all leads to better varieties for African farmers. And I actually believe with the audience that I'm speaking to today, I don't know to go, need to go into deep detail on that, but there will be more, uh, more details presented, of course, throughout the, uh, the seminar today. And I wanted to point out that this partnership of IITA and uh, Bayer and uh, the Gates Foundation is not new. It's been ongoing. We've had uh, uh, partnerships for many, many years. And uh, above, the picture on top there shows uh, Lawrence Kent in the blue shirt there, uh, Gates Foundation uh, program leader that has been uh, working with IITA for many years. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yes, pardon, it's uh, a bit stuck. I'm still trying to get it there. That's OK. So what I uh, want to show here is that uh, we had a very successful project in IAPA called the Cassava Weeds Management Project. And right from the beginning, Bayer had been uh, working with this on this project. And you see the gentleman in the, uh, I don't know what you call him. He's the only one that's not in a white suit. He is a Mohammed from a bear. I think he retired recently. But he was very active in uh, teaching safety when applying herbicides. And he's a, a, a bear employee. Uh, and it's just an example of other areas where Bayer is partnering with IITA. Uh, next slide. So what I want to do is I want to clearly point out that we appreciate this partnership with the uh, uh, Plant Green uh, Project. It is definitely going to help us to have more efficient breeding programs, which leads to better improved varieties for the farmers, bigger and faster and better. This is how this project contributes to the mission of IITA. I want to encourage us all to work together to transform agriculture. And just uh, as a, like an overall statement, we need support of governments, policies, and infrastructure. We need the support of national agriculture research and extension systems, and IITA and other CGI centers working together to develop innovations. And really, the driving force for transforming agriculture in Africa is going to be the private sector. And as, a, as an institute like IITA, we want to partner with Bayer in research, but we also want to partner with Bayer in transforming agriculture in Africa by looking for ways that we can assist Bayer to be a successful business in Africa 
marketing your hybrid, your fertilizers, and your agriculture chemicals. Next slide, please. When we do this and we work together, we believe everyone is going to be a winner. The rural families with improved nutrition, health, and income, Bayer with an expanded market and impact, and the National Agriculture Research and Extension Systems, and IITA because we will have achieve, achieved our mandates of transforming African agriculture. Thank you very much, and next slide. And with that, I would now uh, like to invite Dr. Robert Asiedu, the IITA Director for West Africa, to give his presentation. Robert. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, next slide, please. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to place IITA's top reading in the context of the broader IIT research for development effort within the CD area. Next slide, please. So, um, as you mentioned, we aim to improve food security and availability in Africa, the capability of cultural uh, production and also uh, ensuring sustainability of natural resource management by being this capacity um, from broad Robert, can I please interrupt? Could you could you please hold the microphone maybe closer to you? I, I see it's on the table. If you could please bring it closer. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah. yeah. so the four target zones are the healing forest, the Sahelian dryland, uh, the moist savanna, and then also the mid altitude savanna. These are major target zones within Saharan Africa uh, in which we are looking at impact. Next slide, please. And in this uh, the strategic plan that we've had over the past 10 years, that is ending soon. Uh, we have set for ourselves targets, and some of these targets are listed there. Crop use up by 60%, and also the average farm income to be increased by 40%, leading to the removal of uh, 11 million Africans out of poverty, reduced more, uh, more nutrition, and also taking about 7.5 million hectares of uh, degraded farm lands. Uh, bringing them to productive uh, And IT scientists uh, are based in several stations across Sub Saharan Africa, and their disciplines can be grouped into these four main uh, domains that have been listed there social science, natural resource management, plant production, plant growth, and then biotechnology and genetic improvement. Of course, you do also have a lot. Uh, a great number of scientists in the area of nutrition and food technology. Next slide. Yeah, we target the uh, value chains for fish commodities. These are cassava, cowpea, soybean, yam, and banana. Next slide, please. And then within the CGIR, as IETA is uh, one of the 15 centers of the CGIR, uh, we are active in uh, three of the agro food systems uh, research programs maize, rich cereals and bananas, and then uh, green legumes and dry land cereals. And then we are also active within the agriculture for nutrition and health. Global integration program, climate change, policies, institutions, and markets. So there's a lot of support from the platforms of the CGIAR, the big data, gene banks, gender, excellence in reading. But as most uh, listeners will already know, we are moving or transitioning to one CGIAR. 
and several initiatives are being discussed at the moment. IETA is very active in that are there, across Grand Harbor, CPG, and the excellence in our government. Next slide, please. Now, the reason why for IETA really is heavily dependent on um, major bridging projects that are funded by the Gilman Medley Basket Foundation. As you can see there, we have uh, major projects on county, young maize, banana, and cassava funded by the foundation. And uh, the one of our maize will actually end on 2024, but all the other four major projects will end uh, by December 2022. And this is significant because it gives us the opportunity at that time to actually come up with a more consolidated program instead of the uh, separate program that we have now. We also have benefited from support from the USAID since 2016, specific to the breeding programs. I need to mention here that these uh, breeding projects actually fit very well into the systems projects that we have. Now, giving some examples, uh, this is the climate smart and cultural technology for improvement of uh, livelihoods in Mali and Niger. And then we have the sustainable intensification of key farming systems in West Africa. That's another big project into which the building projects are uh, key. And partnerships are key to these projects, and uh, principally with the NARS, the National Cultural Research and Extension Systems private sector, and also advanced research institutes like uh, Cornell University in the United States of America. Next slide, please. Because the progress from the, uh, these building projects have to reach the ultimate beneficiaries, and uh, delivery is key, and speed systems are very important to this. Through uh, two big projects on the young and cassava, we have uh, made significant progress in developing the sea system, the formal sea system sector for young and cassava, working in close collaboration with the National Regulatory Agency. Uh, we have major projects on soybean in Southern Africa that ensures uh, the delivery of early generation seed, and there's a sea component to the cultural breeding project. Um, but we also have IITA have IITA Go C, which is a limited viability company registered in Nigeria, and that sells uh, early generation seed to commercial seed sector in Nigeria. Next slide, please. Now, I'll come to the Crops to End Hunger Initiative that I mentioned earlier. And this initiative within the CDIR aims at ensuring that the public sector breeding within the CGIR and our national uh, program partners actually raise our levels of responsiveness, efficiency, and effectiveness. And uh, within IITA, as for other CGIR centers, we have developed, with the help of the Excellence in Breeding Platform, our institutional uh, plan for improving all our breeding programs in addition to cross-specific plans that we have also developed. And uh, we maintain close interaction with the experts in building platform in uh, implementing these plans. And uh, this particular project that we are launching today will also enable us to benefit more significantly also from uh, support from there and the uh, staff and scientists from there in uh, ensuring that we come up with effective implementation of this improvement plan. And with that, I'll thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much, Robert. We appreciate that. Uh, you can't hear it, but there's a massive round of applause for you right now. Um, and we thank you very much for keeping on time. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, Mike Graham, the Bayer Global Head Agreed. Uh, Mike, please go ahead. Thanks, Ken, and uh, 
It's really uh, great to be here today. Um, just this is one of those events that I've had marked on my calendar now for a number of months and weeks, and uh, just really excited to be here today and kick this off. And before I get started, I just simply wanted to say thank you. Um, there's obviously been a lot of people, both from IETA and Bayer, that have worked together to get us to this point. And um, it's just amazing the, the work, the collaboration, the interaction that's happened across the teams to enable us to be and kick this off today. So a big thank you to all the teams that were involved, because without you, uh, none of this would have been possible. So, so thank you for that. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, move to the next slide, um, and, and I just wanted to start with a very simple uh, story uh, and share with you one of my favorite pictures from last year. Uh, this picture was actually taken at, at our research farm. Um, There's about a, a an hour northeast of here at Jerseyville, Illinois. And it's a farm where we evaluate a lot of our new products, both from seeds, from our biotech organization, as well as our, our, our uh, chemical portfolio. But every two years, we do something different. Uh, every two years, we open up the farm uh, and we plant a number of demonstrations so that we can share with investors, uh, with the media, with our employees, some of the work that's happening in there and the impact it has. But this was my favorite uh, demonstration from last year uh, when this picture was taken, which was essentially the history of modern corn production in the US for the last 80 years. And the way you think about this slide um, is from right to left um, is each of the land that is, is shown there is how much it was required to produce about 700 kilograms per hectare of yield. So if you look at the right, you can see this is what things look like in 1940. Um, obviously at the time we were just getting to the world of producing single cross hybrids here in the US. In moving 40 years uh, further along, uh, we had had a lot of significant improvements, both in terms of the germplasm, the equipment that used, and then our understanding of agronomic practices that drove yield. And then you could start seeing subsequent changes in how new technology, like advanced breeding technology or biotechnology, started to have an impact on our ability to produce more with a, a, a smaller footprint. And what you see here at the end is, is really our ultimate vision, which uh, is thinking differently about how we produce corn, which in this case, this is a picture of our short corn. Uh, really hard to see, obviously, from this aerial view, but it just gives you that insight that uh, we continue to innovate and we continue to think about how do you produce more with less resources to drive the needs going forward. Now, the great thing about this picture, obviously, is there's been massive change over the last 80 years. The sad part about this picture is in some parts of the world today, we're still producing at the same levels that we were in 1940. And so, our opportunity as we think forward and we think through this collaboration is con to continue to drive product productivity globally. Now, if you go to the next slide, uh, Stella, this simply highlights the urgency that we all have, we all need to think about. Um, Ken very well highlighted the aging and, and growing world population, both from a grower perspective as just population as a whole. Obviously, we are in a world today where we're consuming more and emitting more. And so we've got a need to start thinking about the sustainability of our practices and how we do things differently. Massive uh, potential impact as we think about uh, climate change, uh, loss of biodiversity, which creates uh, future challenges that we're just starting to experience today. And, and then obviously, as we think of as we think about a uh, global uh, population trend and where we are today versus where we'll be in 2050. Just some amazing challenges that um, we combined need to start thinking about how do we do more now to address these future challenges. You can go to the next slide. So, uh, and so for me, and being somebody that's worked in agriculture for my entire career, as somebody that uh, works for Bayer, I'm truly inspired uh, by our purpose. Um, and we live it every day in everything that we do when we talk about science for a better life. But we also have a very ambitious mission. And we have this mission that we share across the organization that we want to drive health for all and hunger for none. 
So virtually everything that you see in the work that we do, both internally and externally, will be connected in one form or fashion uh, to, that, uh, to that purpose and that vision. And we want, you can go to the next slide, Stella. And we want to connect all of this to our sustainability commitments. And, and so we've made some very, very bold sustainability commitments that look at our impact on reducing field greenhouse gas emission by 30%, look at reducing the environmental impact uh, of crop protection by 30%, and really driving and empowering uh, smallholder farmers around the world to have access to agriculture solutions in a way and a form that hasn't been done in the past. If you go to the next slide, Stella. And so I wanted to highlight just how this resonates in the breeding organization. So um, we, for a number of years now, have had these five very core strategic pillars that we focus on. The three in the middle are really um, the technical strategies that uh, we drive every day. We've built over the years um, some amazing capabilities that is allowing us to not only understand every seed that we put into our pipeline, but through the application of modern breeding technology, we can actually start envisioning a world that we're moving from selecting the best products to actually starting to design those products for our customers. Obviously, this allows us to think better about our customer needs, their experience, and leveraging our data to actually position those products that are going to provide the greatest value and the greatest output for our customers around the world. And then this belief that through advances in data science, through advances in a connected pipeline, we can start making better decisions, quicker decisions across the pipeline to drive those new solutions to the market. But what's really exciting about our organization is actually the bookmark um, of these two. And so on the far left of this chart is this continued focus and need of creating an environment that's great for our employees to grow and develop. We create a culture um, where people work on very challenging uh, problems. Um, they have the ability to think about new solutions and experiment, but it's also a culture that uh, requires us to think outside both our organization, outside our company, and build partnerships like the one that we're trying to build here. On the other side of these strategies, obviously, is our impact to the planet. Uh, so we believe as an organization that every day we wake up and we're thinking about those next generation of products, we have the ability to actually have a positive impact on the planet and the work that we're doing. And so everything you see us do and work on is driven in that direction and that belief that those are the outcomes that we can achieve. And I'll end with the last slide, which is really the exciting part um, about this collaboration that built into the DNA of our company is this natural desire and inclination to connect externally and improve lives of the customers that we work and interact with. And so we are incredibly excited about this partnership. We're incredibly excited about the impact that it can hold. Um, and we can't think of a better partner to work with than IETA in really starting this journey as we move forward. Because, and, and I loved, um, Ken, both your slides and Robert's slides, the use of the world of, of tra word transformative. Uh, and we truly believe that this partnership has the opportunity to become a truly transformative initiative as we look forward. So I'll stop there, Stella, and many thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate that excellent presentation. Um, really inspiring. And uh, likewise, IIT, we feel honored and privileged and to be able to work with Bayer. And it's also an inspirational day for us. Thank you very much. For the great benefits will come to the African farmers because of this partnership. We're really 100% certain of that. So, uh, so thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Now uh, we'll move forward uh, with Dr. Usman Bukar from IITA. Bukar, are you there? I don't think you can see my idea. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you, Ken. Uh, uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, now, on behalf of uh, 
IIT colleagues and uh, also the NAS colleagues. Uh, I am very happy to share with you a brief uh, summary of the outcome of the uh, Kaupi modern uh, breeding project that we are conducting with the support of Bayer. So next slide, please. Next slide. Yes, as an uh, introduction, uh, cowpea is uh, a mainly a crop uh, that is grown in the tropics, uh, producing annually uh, 7 million tons over 15 million hectares. 80% uh, of the production is in West Africa. And uh, uh, Nigeria, Niger, and, and Burkina are uh, the, uh, the countries with higher production. And outside uh, the African continent, we have Brazil, that is the largest producer of cowpea. And uh, the crop is really a food and nutrition security crop for more than uh, several hundred million people. The grain are rich in protein, but also in carbohydrate, nutrients, and some level of vit vitamins. And the homes of the, are nutritious for fodder for the uh, ruminant that we have, particularly in the Sahel region. And they have a several contribution as far as the income is concerned. Next, please. So, based on uh, the partnership that I was saying between IIT Bayer and uh, uh, four cont African countries, NARS uh, programs that include Burkina Faso, uh, Ghana, Mali, and uh, also Nigeria, uh, with the support of the Bill and Melinda Foundation Get, Get Foundation program project, uh, the project started mainly first by the assessment of our breeding programs. We use the breeding program assessment tools uh, to see the level of how the program is. And also we have the opportunity uh, to have uh, the need assessment that were elaborated by Bayer. And based on the finding of these assessments, uh, the Bayer teams uh, have used their expertise and then uh, really try to lead us uh, to modernize our uh, breeding program through, through mainly five uh, areas that include first uh, the development of product profiles and uh, secondly the uh, improvement of uh, our breeding strategy and also the elaboration of uh, uh, operational protocols that are used but also the molecular marker deployments and uh, uh, last but not least, the analytical tools that uh, were identified and be used. As you can see in the uh, left side, we started all the our project assessment are really showing that we started by planting and uh, stretching manually, as is shown in that project, project here. Next, please. So we have several achievements, and I think that uh, that five minutes cannot allow me to go through. But let me give you here the direct uh, buyer contributions. And the buyer have contributed uh, to the level of 1.6 million US dollars in kind support since 2016 to date to support uh, 35 uh, uh, buyer employees' engagement in uh, the project. And uh, that uh, I would like here to take now the opportunity to thank, I cannot thank maybe all those 35 uh, people, but let me thank the people that I'm, uh, I'm showing the slide here. I mean, on the slide, the picture on the slide here, the photos. Uh, there is, uh, of course, Stella that is here and organizing all our interaction with all those 35 people. And uh, besides that, we have, I don't know, every two weeks or three weeks, uh, times we need to meet and discuss of the activity of the project. Then also we have uh, Kushi uh, Chiwari, that is one of uh, a leader that is in the system. 
and the bear system. We have also uh, Brian, uh, Cabriana, and Mike uh, Clayway. Those uh, four individuals are really our heroes, and they were with us uh, through all our journey in that modernization, and they are always uh, ready to answer our question and, and our concern about any of the aspect of the breeding program that I have earlier in, uh, mentioned. I would like also to take this opportunity to thank the Bayer as a uh, company for donating us uh, one corn planter, four seed stretchers, and uh, four seed counters. Uh, these are really the help or going to help us to really increase our mechanization uh, aspect of uh, the breeding that we are conducting currently. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, NARS and IIT also have really contributed hard. We have worked very hard and we have identified 76 actions or tasks uh, to, improve our, to improve our building programs and uh, uh, those were accomplished at, at the level of at least 75 percent. We have among those kind of actions, there are four product concepts that were uh, developed. We have also increased the effective size of our uh, population size by at least 25 percent. 100% uh, uh, implementation of our digital data capture and also seed uh, purity uh, control, QAQC. And then also we have uh, implemented now an uh, advanced testing site in four of our countries and we are covering at least 12 uh, locations to generate uh, enough data to make our decision of advancement of each of the stage of the testing. Uh, that I think that's thank you for my, this is my part of the contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luca. Uh, and now we switch over to Stella. Can we have the next slide, please? Yes, hi everyone. I'm Stella Salvo, and, and like Lukar said, I've been uh, involved in that first phase of our partnership with IITA. And so it pleases me very much to be here today. Like, like uh, Mike was alluding to, we worked very hard to get here and it's, it's been um, a wonderful journey. Um, I'd like to take a moment though to reflect on our experiences together. Working with Bukhar and his team has been one of the greatest uh, uh, milestones in my career uh, to have had that opportunity to meet you, get to know you and your team and, and to see you know, how you navigate your program in, in such an uh, interesting and challenging uh, breeding program uh, environment. Uh, and so I want to definitely thank you, Bukhar, for all of your trust and our relationship. It's been a wonderful uh, opportunity to work with you. Um, as I do reflect on that past uh, part of the partnership, it really uh, strikes me how um, collaboration is really part of our DNA, all of us, both there and IITA. It is by far the way that we do work and the way that we achieve successes. So I'm very happy to be able to build on that uh, and, and foray into this uh, next version of the partnership. I mean, we've, we've uh, received great feedback and we have a lot more to learn and a lot more to, to do together. Um, and so uh, my portion of this uh, first half is really to share more with everyone on what, what is this next phase going to look like? How are we going to take our learnings from what Bukhar has, has shared uh, and, and foray into this next uh, 30 months of this new partnership that we have called the Modern Breeding Project? Um, to try to simplify the scope of, of, of our reach, um, I really, uh, the, 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 we, we're, we're really centering our focus on three key elements. Um, the first element is around uh, customer centricity, um, to, to really think through how we focus on the smallholder farmer, how we focus our breeding programs to uh, direct all of its in influence and impact on, on the benefits and the needs of the farmer. And this is absolutely you know, part of the, the uh, culture of our bear organization in addition to IITA. Uh, we'll be doing this alongside with uh, very important partners um, like the Excellence in Breeding Platform, which you'll hear about later on today. Uh, but we will uh, definitely be driving our, uh, our, our engagement around the key aspects of, of 
um, improving the lives of the smallholder farmer by, by focusing on, on their needs. Um, the other uh, big bucket is around operational excellence. And so you, know, you saw some examples of what Bukhar shared in our past engagement in terms of different ways that we can look at the operations. Um, and some of this can be very much from you know, uh, you know, and ensuring that everyone is 100% mechanized, uh, ensuring everyone is 100% utilizing digital platforms um, that the Excellence of Breeding platform is, is creating, uh, but really um, being able to look back and see how well did we do and, and um, are we putting systems in place, are we measuring ourselves against an uh, opportunity to do even better. Um, and so the, the third bucket is um, around organizational leadership. Uh, this is uh, an area that I'm really excited to uh, to put as a key pillar, uh, because w alongside with with uh, myself, there are there are others at, at, at Bear that are going to be um, uh, providing uh, leadership and, and mentorship to to uh, IITA scientists around organizational leadership, and so they're going to be talking about how do we you know engage and inspire the people, and and how do we uh, manage the program in the most effective way, both from the organizational leadership aspect and also uh, the pipeline. And so with, with all of this, this really uh, it coincides very well with our sustainability strategy at Bear um, in terms of how do we contribute to those sustainable development goals. And those are indeed shared goals amongst our partners, both IITA and Gantz Foundation. So what are you going to expect to see from this uh, project um, under, under the preface of those pillars? Um, Gates Foundation and IITA, like you saw earlier, have very ambitious goals. Uh, very ambitious goals to reach uh, and empower uh, more farmers, and, and IITA absolutely has a, a great amount of reach and leverage and, and um, reputation in, in this area. Uh, and so we're going to be very keen, uh, along with Excellence in Breeding and the CG Center and Gates Foundation, we will be very keen to, to ensure that we are tracking that rate of genetic gain, that we're tracking the yield potential in the farmer field so that we're seeing at least at least that minimum, that 1.5% across all crop programs. And so uh, in, in some programs that it, perhaps it's already there, uh, in some programs that need is, is is a really ambitious goal. Uh, and so we're going to leverage these different approaches uh, from all the resources that we'll have in front of us, from Bayer and Excellence in Breeding and IATA, to ensure that we're delivering and maximizing on that opportunity to see uh, the, the opportunity for genetic gain. Um, and then, of course, around the organizational leadership, something that that um, I definitely learned with, with my career, with uh, you know, watching Mike lead his organization, that the culture of the organization is such an, imp an important um, aspect of, of improvement, but also longevity and sustainability. And, and that's another part that really inspires us to work with others in this space, work with you at IITA uh, to, to um, learn more about your culture, how you work, uh, what works well, and, and uh, we can you know, definitely navigate through that and learn through that together. So with that, um, I think Ken is going to take on this next part and we're going to have a wonderful session uh, of, of open Q&A. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Stella. We appreciate uh, that wonderful overview. And uh, like she said, uh, it's now time for questions or comments. Uh, you can do that by raising your hand or putting something in the chat box. Right now, I don't see anybody raising hand, and I don't see anything in the chat box. Um, maybe I would just... Oh, you have some chat. Oh, we have some in there. Okay, excellent. From uh, Jerry Adlin, we have... Uh, the emphasis on mechanization is very important. Mechanization is key to increasing plot throughput and heritability. Mechanized programs require strong maintenance support. Is part of the mechanization process implementing a centralized and routine breeding equipment maintenance program? Who would like to address that? Is that uh, probably for Mike and Robert? Yes. Um, I don't make a comment on that. And um, that is that um, yeah, to a large extent, we are increasing uh, the number of uh, cross-crop services 
the capacity of these services to the building program. And uh, specifically to, for instance, some of the commodities that we just uh, recruited, uh, the head of farm management, uh, and funds from the program, uh, the cross the hand on that initiative. So the current level of mechanization is going to be uh, significantly improved. And uh, instead of having each of the programs trying to uh, organize how we uh, support the, the work that they have in the field uh, for their uh, leading trials, we don't want to make them centralized. Uh, this is some a uh, dream we've had for a while, and uh, we now have the opportunity to implement it so that we have the research funds services which uh, control over all the operations out in the field for the leading programs. And so, mechanization in the field certainly will be through that. But of course, um, other areas of mechanization in terms of, say, processing and assessment of quality and all. We also want to keep in the to the sharing across cross of the services that are available so that there will be efficiency and also um, basically some savings instead of each program trying to acquire services in central line. Thank you very much, Robert. Mike, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I don't know if I uh, have a lot to add, Ken. Maybe I'll I'll uh, I'll turn it over to Stella in a little bit here. Um, see if she has any more detail around the specifics. Um, but it's a really important question. Um, and you know, you can spend and invest in mechanization, um, but if you don't have a plan and a strategy to ma maintain the quality, to determine how it gets utilized, to ensure that the equipment's in the right place at the right time then the effectiveness of how you use that mechanization isn't what you you um, you intend. And so we actually have a number of metrics that we'd be more than happy to share with the team in terms of how we think about mechanization specifically around not only make, making sure it's in the right uh, condition, but also how you most effectively use it so you maximize hours and it's getting used. And I think it's a very important thing to understand in the context of transitioning and where you guys are going on a, on, a, on a mechanization journey. But I don't know, Sally, you, you know more of the, the, the details in this space, so I'm not sure if you have uh, anything you'd like to add. Um, hi. Not, not a ton to add, really. Um, just to recognize that, you know, as we um, engage in this mechanization area in our previous um, uh, few years, um, there was quite an effort to do a lot of training in that area, and and uh, within that training was also absolutely Gary um, um, a maintenance program. Um, I see Chad Allen is here. He's he's going to be someone that we'll we'll pull from uh, in our breeding organization to continue on the work that Mike Claywell had done with the field testing team um, to to ensure that we have shared those best practices around that. In addition to that, the role that Robert suggested uh, mentioned that that. Uh, he, IATA is hiring a, a field manager role. Um, Excellence Degree right. also has uh, folks that are very keen on the area uh, on, on uh, mechanization that we'll be able to draw from. And I think with, with those collaborations and those experts, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be able to take a strong look at that. Thank you so much for the question, Gary. Thank you very much for those excellent responses. We have another question here from uh, Martin Alberts. It is, how do you intend to get these improved crops product to small-scale farmers? According to my experience, this is a problem all over Africa. Robert, do you want to address that? Um, yes, so uh, I'll comment on other colleagues and so um, As I mentioned in my presentation, we first um, have improvement in the feed sector and strong engagement with the private sector in this also. So for the crops where we didn't have very good uh, practices in the feed sector, uh, in complementary projects, we now have uh, the methodologies, uh, for instance, with the those that are propagated for the rapid uh, methodologies for propagation, 
And not only that, then the regulatory systems that are important to ensure the health quality, the assessment, and also engagement in the various stakeholders. Um, but in all this ensuring that we encourage private sector participation, because uh, the public sector will do a bit, but unless we strengthen the public sector feed production, uh, this is not going to uh, work very well. So we have projects, we engage with the national partners, we engage with the private uh, sector to ensure that we have the, the seeds reaching uh, the farming communities. We've also had projects where we have community level seed production, where we have directly engaged with uh, these communities in the practices that are necessary to ensure not only the production, but also the quality, the storage, and all of that. So through some of these mechanisms, uh, we have uh, actually brought for several of the costs to have improved the level of delivery of products from the breeding programs, and this is a um, work in progress we continue to do. Thank you, Robert. Uh, uh, Luca or uh, Mike, did you want to add anything on that? Uh, nothing on that, Ken, just um, maybe it's one of the things that um, I, I worry about the most. Um, and I, I and, and we haven't solved it right. So um, I, I think we we need to spend more time in this space, um, really understanding um, what's in place today, uh, what needs to be built, um, but really connecting maybe with our customers a little differently, so we understand what's. How do we help them understand uh, the value of some of the products that are, be, are being developed, uh, developed uh, through IETA? How do we um, help them with that journey of changing out from one to the other? Um, you know, so you know, you can you can read the you know Gary's got a great paper just on some of the numbers and the and the transitions that have happened in Africa, and um, it, it's an area that needs significant focus and uh, one that I think. Uh, we haven't solved and one that needs uh, a lot of attention by this group. Thank you very much, Mike. We're getting a lot of questions now, so that's very exciting. Uh, but it's hard for me to select, but I've got one here that I can uh, read. Uh, and um, ready to go now. Ah, this is from uh, Professor Kolowole Ojo here in Nigeria, and uh, Mike, it's to you. Can you give us a bit more information on uh, the Health for All and Hunger for None initiative? Um, so it, um, and, and I appreciate the question because it, um, um, I, I think for those of you that have followed um, Bayer over the years, um, we um, had obviously a purpose which was science for better life, um, which um, virtually all the functions um, and all the platforms and all the, the divisions within Bayer are rolled up to. But as the organization, the company stepped back um, and really thought about the core components of what we can do, both from a uh, you know, a pharmaceutical perspective, a consumer health perspective, and a crop science perspective, we, we wanted to have something that um, was more aspirational in terms of how we think about what we bring as a company to um, the planet, to consumers, um, and, and to our customers around the world. And so um, we just uh, kicked this off uh, most probably three or four months ago now. So it's a very new vision statement that's getting rolled out, very tightly connected to what we call our life values um, in terms of how we want to work and operate, both internally as a company and then with our partners and externally. Um, but it's something that is really intended to set bold, ambitious goals for what we want to achieve and what are the outcomes we want for the company as we think forward. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mike. We are, uh, we just have a couple minutes left, but I would just like to ask uh, Robert and uh, Mike the same question to wrap things up. Um, 
Could you give us what you think are going to be the most exciting things about this project? Maybe, Robert, we start with you. What excites you the most about all this? Yes, um, what excites me? Um, it's so awesome because um, among these, uh, the fact that we have the opportunity, really, to very quickly raise the, the quality of our reading efforts. And uh, as a result of that, the much more responsive than we have been in the past to the needs of the market. Um, to bring our products that are really relevant and uh, really needed uh, in the market and fix the significant market issues. And uh, through this, then also to then bring changes to the lives of the millions of uh, farmers that we are targeting in the impact zones that uh, I mentioned. So, basically, the initial impact will be on the breeding program themselves, when the breeding program is become much more efficient. And then once it becomes much more efficient, then more demand there, then there could be a lot of significant benefits to the other communities. Thank you very much, Robert. I'm also very excited about exactly those things. Um, Mike? Yeah, I, I, the, the same same for me. Um, obviously, it always starts with our customers, so very excited about uh, smaller farmers in Africa and what this partnership can, can enable and do. Um, I have honestly been truly inspired by the work that has already happened between Bayer and IATA. Um, I, you know, Bukhart in, in five minutes did, a, did an incredible job of summarizing a ton of work that uh, the two organizations came together and delivered, and, it, and it's just inspiring to see. And so, when, when you think about that versus, as I hear and I see what the teams are putting together now and how they're engaging and thinking about where we're going, the outcomes are truly, truly inspiring. And uh, I think what we can do both from, again, products, from technology, from how we work better together, and then just how do we learn from each other? And um, we, we get as much as bear from this in terms of what we learn from IETA as IETA gets from bear. And so, I look at this as truly an opportunity for both um, both groups to really grow and develop and, and, and provide a lot of value uh, moving forward. So um, I'm very, very excited about uh, this new journey. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'm also very excited. I, I, I've really been inspired with the partnership on the Cow Pea Breeding so far. And I think their partnership with Cow Pea Breeding absolutely outstanding. And we're looking forward to that to expand to, to the other crops that we've been breeding on here at Idaho. So uh, I'm really also impressed with the inspirational leadership being provided by both Robert and Mike. We really appreciate that. Uh, I'm sure the breeders in both Bayer and Idaho here are inspired to give it that extra, extra effort. So I want to thank both of you very much for, for the great contribution you made in the last one hour here. Uh, I want to thank my boss, Sangini. He couldn't be here, but he prepared uh, the presentation that I tried to give to the best of my ability. So if we could give all the speakers, and, and also the, uh, I know everybody probably wanted to ask a question, but uh, we, we got a few good questions and, and uh, excellent responses. So let's give them a round of applause. And uh, I think we go to the next slide. And so the next session coming up, uh, it's going to include uh, speeches from the executive director of Eclipse and Breeding um, platform from Michael Quinn. We'll have a presentation from the head of breeding, the new head of breeding at IFDA, John Gira. And uh, then we'll have presentation from breeders from both Bayer and IFDA. Next slide. And it's my pleasure to turn uh, the proceedings over to Dr. Robert S. Robert? Okay. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, so we now come into the session where we will listen to 
scientists from Bayer and also uh, scientists from RIT present uh, some of their work and uh, summaries to give us a taste of what to expect in the project. And so, as mentioned, we will start off with uh, the executive uh, director of uh, the excellence in the platform and the moon to come there. Then I'll hand over to Stella to continue the presentations from the Virginia project leads. So, let's go to the next slide. Yes, so uh, it's my pleasure to turn it over now to Martin King, Director for SMS in Reading Platform. So, Martin, please. Great. Thank you very much, Robert. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, please. Go ahead. Great, okay. Well, first I'd really like to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you all and to talk about excellence in breeding and, and what we're here to achieve, which, which is something that I'm really very passionate and excited about, so thank you. Uh, through the mandate laid down by the Crop 10 Hunger Initiative and results from the... I'll get you to move on to the next, next slide if you can, please, Stella. I'll keep going. Uh, yeah, through the, the mandate that was laid down uh, by the Crops and Hunger Initiative and results from the from the BPAS, the, the message was very clear that, that CG breeding programs need to increase their rate of genetic gain and to reduce the average age of varieties in farmers' fields. So on a technical level, we'll achieve this through implementation of current best practice, appropriate use of technology, and by being market-driven, uh, meaning that uh, breeding decisions are completely aligned with the variety, with the drivers of variety adoption, and and this aligns well with what Stella was saying about customer centricity. But really, to be honest, that'll be the easy stuff, um, and because what we're really talking about here is, is driving change. So it, it's going to be more the human side that will that will determine our success, successfully driving change and having a culture of continuous improvement and and being willing to, to grab hold of those changes with both hands and really drive them and, and, and get them implemented is what's going to determine our success. If you go to the next slide, please. So, for Excellence Breeding's approach, uh, well, Excellence Breeding provides support for system-wide optimization of CG breeding programs. We do this by providing tools, services, and know-how for implementation of, of current best practices. And so this is really how we started out uh, by providing this. And we've really moved on beyond that since we, since we, since we first started in 2017 to now also um, provide comprehensive support um, for high priority crops and hunger programs uh, to their centres and those programs to execute the optimization process, which I will describe shortly. If you move on to the next slide, please. So I mentioned the um, those high priority programs. So I'll just take a moment to describe what they are. They're, they're listed here. Uh, they're various crop by centre regions. And these are chosen based on the, the 2018 IFBRI analysis of potential for each crop by region combination to alleviate poverty and what their potential is to, to, to alleviate that. Uh, these seven crops were the ones that, that rose to the top and as you can see four of the seven are, are actually at IETA. So the point I'm wanting to make is that increasing genetic gain and impact of the IETA breeding programs is really critical to the success of excellence in breeding to crops dead and hunger and so therefore also breeding at large for one CGIR and I'll point to how that connection is made shortly. If you go to the next slide, please. So I talked earlier about the, the optimization process that Excellence and Breeding supports specifically for these, for these priority programs that are in the previous slide. The first step is to understand where things currently are and to a large extent this is being done but of course a better understanding of how things really are and documenting this in a way that can be shared and that creates transparency is an ongoing task and this is one important touch point where Bayer and Excellence and Breeding will work together. 
obviously with going to Yahoo, which was goes without saying, to, to run this analysis and to understand this better. The second step is for IETA to develop a, a strategic stepwise plan for moving forward and implementing breeding program improvements. And for this, you have the, the improvement plan. As you all know, uh, this, this has been developed and many of you worked hard to develop this last year. However, this is a, this is a living document, meaning that it will really never be finished and is always needing to be revised and updated. And this should be done with uh, supporting partners such as the CRPs and, for example, um, in the case of Cassava at ITA, the Next Gen Cassava program and, and other supporting programs. And, and this is another example of where Bayer and Essence and Breeding come together to provide support to develop very high quality plans uh, with ITA that, that set ITA up for, the, for success and for increased impact. And finally, uh, the best made plans aren't worth much without successful implementation. And, and so this can be the tricky part. And I mean, as you know, knowing what to do is one thing, but uh, getting it done can, is really where the, the rubber hits the road. Uh, again, this is where ITA should leverage the support that's available to them uh, through, the, through their partners and through the supporting partners. Um, and is another example where Bayer and Excellence and Breeding come together to provide support to Excellent uh, to ITA. The next slide, please. I don't really need to spend a lot of time on this slide. It's really just to say that um, to talk about how we're set up and to say that we work across all eleven uh, CG breeding institutes that we have presence around the globe and that we're structured in a way as to ensure that we have expertise in each of the various areas critical to modern breeding, to a modern breeding program through our five modules, which you can see here and that many of you are familiar with. And this is really just a way in which we organise ourselves to ensure that we've got the, the required expertise. Uh, we're increasingly looking for ways to, to not engage in such a modular way and to um, really come together across modules to for any particular outcome um, uh, and to yeah to really break down those silos and, and so hopefully we'll see that change as we engage going forward. If you move to the next slide please. So this is just a, an organogram for the excellence and breeding team so that uh, and I won't go into all the detail here and if you want the detail, you can go to the Excellence and Breeding website to, to find the specific people that can support you to implement any particular change that, that you're working on. Uh, there, there has been growth in the team recently, and so um, and those first five pillars map to the, the five modules, which I described in the previous slide. And so really, for any particular area of work, that there's someone there that you can reach out to. Go to the next slide, please. Okay, so it, uh, that middle section is supposed to say context, it hasn't really come up very well on my screen, um, so I expect yours as well. Um, this is really to try and explain how excellence and breeding fits within the move towards 1CGIR and also the Crops Down Hunger initiative. With 1CG, we're likely to see a centralised management structure for breeding implemented across the CGIR. That's going to take a little bit of time, perhaps it'll probably be another two years until that's implemented. And so as an interim step toward that goal, the Crops Den Hunger implementation mechanism, which is led by Excellence and Breeding, has been established. And through this mechanism, breeding leads from each of the eight crop-based breeding institutes get together monthly with the five main funders, ACR, Gates Foundation, DFID, GIZ and USAID. Um, together with Excellence and Breeding to review progress and to ensure that collectively uh, we're making rapid and consistent progress towards optimisation of CG breeding. Earlier the, the term transformation was used and, and that's what this is really about. This needs to be transformative. That's what, um, that's what everyone's looking for from, from this move to 1CG and, and the, the breeding component of it. That's what is being driven and is expected from the Crops and Hunger Initiative. And, and so this mechanism has been created to give ourselves the best opportunity to achieve this. 
through this mechanism, excellence and breeding has, has been mandated to provide the, the system level oversight and so it has an accountability role and in this way, um, this is how it links to that interim step toward that, that centralised management structure uh, whilst we don't have it and we've got this mechanism in place. Uh, so we have an accountability role to ensure the progress towards this goal of optimised breeding across CG, which, which is essentially going to be implementation of the improvement plan. So this does full circle back to, back to um, that optimisation process. So in addition to that, uh, this mechanism, um, again linked with crops and hunger, uh, excellence and breeding manages the, the funding which is being funneled through the crops and hunger uh, initiative. And, and this is to be used specifically for modernisation of CG breeding. This is not funding for day-to-day -day operations. It's for one-off investments that, pardon me, that, uh, that set the, the centre or the program up to be uh, to have higher rates of genetic gain per dollar invested uh, going forward. Currently, uh, there's $17 million uh, sitting in this fund, and we're expecting another large allocation this year. Um, and so this, this represents a significant opportunity to, to drive that outcome for the modernisation of breeding across, across the CG, but um, particularly for ITA, and especially since the ITA crops really rise to the top of that, that prioritisation exercise. And already, currently, a lot of this is, is already going, uh, a large chunk of this is going to ITA, and, and ITA are the, the largest beneficiaries uh, to date of, of this fund. And this is yeah, this will be a, a valuable resource. If we go to the next slide, please, Stella. This is my this is my last slide, so I'm trying to keep this uh, pretty brief. Um, so I'll try and uh, wrap this up by just pointing to uh, the alignment. I've got a little bit of background noise coming through, but I'll try and um, yeah, try and point to how how. Uh, all of this comes together in terms of alignment between Bayer and Excellence and Breeding. Uh, for ITA to, to optimise it, its breeding, um, you're likely to, to benefit from tools, services and know-how, at least that's the model that we're working under. And, and these can come from Bayer or Excellence and Breeding and we'll, we will work together to ensure that these are provided to, to ITA and, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's almost a case of you can't have too much, I think, in, in when it comes to this sort of support for any program. I pointed earlier to the three steps of the optimisation process and how Bayer and Excellence Breeding can come together to support ITA in this process. And so it's not just from tool service and know-how, it's also when it comes to to uh, to getting that implemented. Now, and m many of these tools and best practices that need to be adapted to ITA's unique situation and planning uh, are still being determined or developed and so excellence and breeding can really benefit from from Bayer's support to develop these which will in turn have benefit for the whole CGIR because once we have these we, we make them available um, uh, broadly across the CG. So Bayer and excellence and breeding are, are in very close communication we have been working closely together already um, to, and uh, Stella and I have been working talking regularly in close uh, communication since since Excellence and Breeding started and so we'll continue to do that and and to work synergistically for ITA's benefit. As I mentioned earlier, there, there's a lot of work to be done and, and to work together to be able to, to divide between us the support that ITA requires will, will only be, or is, or hopefully, will be to the benefit of ITA. And so with that, that's, that's all I wanted to share. Um, I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to present and to talk about what Excellence and Breeding can bring to this relationship and, and I really look forward to continuing to, to work with both Bayer and with ITA and I'm really excited about this, so thanks very much. Thank you very much, Matthew. Um, you both stayed on with you, John. John is coming in and uh, you had a meeting at ITA, so it's mostly to Introduce yourself to the team. Thank you, Robert. I'm sure you can hear me there. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just to say a few words, they're just coming into the project now. 
quite exciting and inspiring uh, to see the launch of the, this project. Uh, this partnership in collaboration will enable all our programs at uh, GA uh, to achieve operational excellence and leadership uh, products in the, in the tropics. Most importantly, the alignment will allow these projects and programs to align with the smallholder farmer requirements and basically the consumers. I'm sure it's my understanding that this will be achieved through integration of these practices uh, that have been tested and proven uh, in the private sector using the modules from AIB, my understanding. So uh, I will bring my own experience into this, having worked in the private sector for the past 10 years, I also bring some contribution to it. And most importantly, there are very good teams of experts uh, from both their IITA and also support from EIB that will come through. It will be quite inspiring, a good opportunity for me to work with all these teams. I'm sure together we can do a lot uh, for the benefit of the small water farmers in our quest to transform African agriculture. But tell me, I see that uh, it will enable our programs to achieve some efficiency and effectiveness in turning around new varieties and fast track them uh, to the farmers and consumers. So basically, I can say myself and of course my team, the IITA, I'm sure we are already a bit of ground running. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Yes, thank you very much. And, um, yes, um, now I want to hand over to Stella to continue the presentation from Kelly Sabrea. So, come on, please, Stella. Yes, hello again, everyone. Thank you for staying on. Uh, we're going to go a little bit deeper on the uh, modern breeding project here. Um, um, in, in terms of, you know, building on to what uh, Michael uh, shared with the Excellence in Breeding uh, platform, you know, we are absolutely here to support those efforts. Um, and, and so as, as we get deeper into this program, we're, we're going to get into much more detail around, uh, you know, what are the needs uh, from the IITA breeders. But uh, before we get there, uh, I wanted to share with, uh, primarily speaking to the IITA breeders here at this point where, um, you know, what are you going to expect from us uh, and, and how is this going to look like? Uh, and so what uh, Michael and I talked about, you know, we really wanted to uh, uh, hopefully share with you that, you know, our intent is to add to um, uh, sorry, and, and help synergize and harmonize across the projects that you have um, currently. Uh, and we realize that that is um, very challenging. I think the IITA breeder is maybe one of the most uh, taxing, <laughs> difficult breeding roles I can imagine. And, and so we definitely don't want to make uh, you know more work out of nothing. We want to build on uh, those things that you are already currently working on. And so what I have here are these you know key areas that um, you know through the proposal of this project, these are some of the expectations from from the Gates Foundation on what these outcomes could look like. Uh, moving from what Michael alluded to, from that theory to practice, from, you know, we've heard about this to uh, this is what we're going to implement. And uh, I do uh, know that EIB has taken a very good chunk and a great step forward in this area uh, with, with many of you already. And so we're going to really have to kind of jump in, understand where you're at, and, and see where we can help and really be very clear on, on how we um, navigate through this together. So uh, one thing that, um, uh, we, we, that I wanted to really um, help, help share and visualize is, is how this project, how the framework and governance is, is kind of set up. Um, we've met John. John is the, this, this head of breeding. You know, he's uh, maybe in transition, maybe moving now. <laughs> John, if you're super new in, into this uh, um, trifecta or this, you know, uh, collaboration here. Um, but we're going to really be relying heavily on you, John, um, to help us understand where, where we're at at a high level. Um, and, and so this project is really going to be um, uh, led through a, st a steering team um, where representatives from both Bayer, IATA, um, Excellence in Breeding, and, and maybe even some um, additional projects that have, 
you know, key stake, uh, key stake in the outcomes of how the project is being conducted. You know, folks will be absolutely part of, of the element of, you know, being able to see what, where is the progress, what are the highlights, uh, as we move along in this very short time period, what, what are the areas that we need additional support and eyes around? And so there will be a, a steering team established uh, for this uh, project. Um, in addition, and what the next series of the program will really look like today is um, a recognition of both, you know, the IITA breeding scientists uh, and, and what they are uh, contributing to in terms of food security and, and their programs. And then also uh, in this next uh, segment, I'm going to be very pleased to introduce you to our BEAR um, IITA crop leads. Uh, these are our skills-based volunteers who are going to be uh, developing a very strong relationship with the IIT breeding scientists. Um, I do want to maybe come back and circle around here that there is a, another person from the Bear organization uh, that's going to help uh, facilitate uh, the management of the project from the Bear end of it. Uh, you know, when I did this myself with CalP, it was you know, definitely more than <laughs> a proportion of someone's time. And so uh, I'm very pleased to um, share with all of you that um, through, through the funding from Gates Foundation, they've also contributed funds to hire a full-time role um, for this project. Um, that would be, uh, they'll be housed at Bear. Uh, they'll be, you know, helping manage the Bear personnel and, and projects, if you will. Um, but they're they're also going to be, um, you know, 100% accountable for the outcomes of this project. Uh, and so that is funded from the Gates Foundation subcontract through IITA. Uh, we are currently actually um, narrowing down the scope of uh, an outstanding plethora of candidates that have applied to that role. Um, and and so hopefully we'll have someone in place in the very near future. Uh, so um, without further ado, um, I'm going to um, take this time really to uh, to my colleagues that are going to join us in this effort. Uh, and so the first uh, um, bear IIT crop lead that you will hear from is, um, oh pardon, here's another bill here. Before I get into introducing you to Martine, uh, I just want to <laughs> Um, add that you know these these success factors and Michael you definitely alluded to this as well but um, the, the success factors of this project if we you know pull from the the experience of the past of, of our Calpi project and other projects um, in terms of um, external partnerships um, there are key elements of success here right strong relationships strong communication strong project management and clear accountability accountability and ownership so you are expect that from us. Um, and if you're not getting it, please say something, uh, because this is absolutely the key to our success. Uh, and so we have very many people around uh, different um, experts, different uh, folks that can really uh, help support um, your efforts at IITA. Uh, but please do uh, keep those uh, relationships open and communication open so we can see to the success of this project. Um, so with that, um, I'm actually going to pass it over to Martine Medina. And so uh, Martine, please uh, introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Stella, and thanks everyone. Really, really excited to be here today and be part of, of this collaborative project with IITA. Uh, my name is Mark Main. I grew up in, in Uruguay. Uh, I have lived in the US, uh, lived in Brazil, and I'm back in the US in the last three and a half years. Uh, a little bit of my background, I have a degree in agronomy uh, from the University in Uruguay and a master's degree in applied plant science uh, in plant breeding and molecular genetics from the University of Minnesota. I have been a corn breeder with Monsanto for, for eight years with the focus on developing inbred lines and products for the central corn belt, 110 RM. Um, I spent three years uh, in Brazil uh, leading different breeding programs and the last three and a half years back in the US when I'm leading the North America hybrid breeding programs. So my team is uh, responsible for delivering the inbred lines and first products that go to national testing for both uh, corn and, and canola for the US and the, and the Canadian market. Um, really, a couple of things also uh, to share. What's my passion and why the interest in this? 
I'm very passionate about how we can think uh, transforming agriculture through science for a sustainable food supply and improving life of our growers. And the focus that I have in my role today is how we can do that by bringing together um, what is quantitative genetics, the knowledge of germplasm and experience of the breeders with modern tools, what is artificial intelligence, gene editing and other, other tools that we are developing in order to bring genetic gain and better products to growers. So really excited to have the opportunity to contribute uh, in crops that are not my speciality uh, and really to have broader impact in agriculture besides corn and canola. And, and personally, it's a phenomenal learning opportunity and really looking forward to learn from all the, the team that will be working uh, with Casal and Jan. So really looking forward for it, very excited. And with that, I will move to the next uh, Bayer uh, representative for this project. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay, Stella? Okay, very good. Uh, again, uh, Kusi Tiwari here. Uh, very glad to be here as, as part of the crops uh, team from Bayer. Uh, working, uh, looking forward to working with Banana and be part of the Banana team here. We are working with IITA. Uh, originally from Nepal, I grew up in a small farm in central Nepal and uh, went uh, did my undergraduate from Nepal. And I had the opportunity to work with the uh, uh, cow breeding program in Nepal. And it's around the 90s and uh, excellent opportunity to work with uh, IITA breeder. And during that time, uh, I was able to release two cow varieties, cowpea lines uh, back home in Nepal. So in fact, uh, they were really great looking, really high yielding, did very well. So uh, that was uh, the connection that I had uh, with IITA from, from uh, you know, uh, from 90s. Uh, did my PhD in genetics breeding from uh, University of Manitoba, Canada, and uh, took a role with uh, Pioneer Hybrid International, or currently Forteva, and uh, worked in the southern U.S., uh, Georgia, uh, almost for 10 years. Uh, and then, uh, from 2010, uh, I joined uh, Monsanto, Bayer, uh, developing, uh, uh, focus on developing corn uh, hybrids and inverts for the southern U.S. Uh, for the full maturity, so pretty much more southern belt of the United States. So for pretty much, uh, you know, during my career, I have been really involved uh, uh, developing uh, 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 corn hybrids uh, for for the growers, and also focusing my lot of uh, research work focusing on uh, breeding for disease resistance and also germplasm integration. I think it fits very well with, with, the, with, the, uh, with the banana program that we are going to work together, also focus on drought tolerance. And I, I think I really want, feel very comfort, comfortable and excited to, to uh, uh, contribute on precision breeding and the breeding efficiency of our, our farm uh, you know, uh, during that time. So I have, uh, I know banana pretty much from, you know, from my whole life and really looking forward And next we have Scott Jackson. Um, please go ahead, Scott. Uh, you're on mute. Still on mute, Scott. Do you want us to go to Javier and then we can go back to you? Okay. We will come back to Scott Jackson. Um, Javier? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Very well. Thank you. All right. So, great, great to be here and, and see so many good friends and colleagues in the call. Um, First, a big thanks uh, to, to everyone that contributed to make us in, to reaching this point eh, of kicking off this important project. And uh, of course, uh, wishing you all, all the best uh, and 
And, and uh, yeah, uh, hoping that everyone is doing okay uh, with all the pandemic situation and so on. It's, uh, it's quite challenging time for, for everyone. Uh, my name is Javier. And, uh, I'm, I'm heading the Euro Company in Bayer. And uh, uh, yeah, grew up in Spain, originally from Spain, but uh, left Spain in the 90s, early 90s, and lived in the US, uh, Mexico, and France. So never come back to my home country since then. And uh, yeah, did my PhD in Iowa State in the US and uh, went to Thibit for a few years. And uh, honestly, that was a wake up call eh, for me in my career. Uh, and it's been uh, bringing me to, to where I am right now. Eh, all, all Since then, all, all my inspiration, attention, it has been uh, in, in breeding and, and how to uh, improve uh, crops for developing work, uh, essentially. Uh, during my time in uh, Texas A&M University as faculty, several students from Africa went through the program and uh, very happy to see uh, them coming back, uh, leading programs now in Africa, making a huge impact in, in the region and so that, that is, is one of the most rewarding uh, aspect of my career see, see those students uh, now uh, leaders in, in, in breeding in, in Africa. Uh, moved to the private sector, uh, back to Europe uh, in Syngenta uh, and I was heading uh, the maize breeding program for, for Europe, uh, Africa, Middle East. So, still Africa in, in, my, in my radar, and uh, that, that was great. And uh, met some of you there and, and worked with some of you during that time. And then I uh, uh, moved to, to Monsanto, uh, Bayer, and working in the Eurocon breeding. Uh, so, in all my career, I've been in and out in different shape and forms involved in international agriculture uh, with the CGR system in, 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 in main uh, cornerstone on, on, on my interaction. So, a great opportunity for me uh, to reconnect uh, emotionally uh, with the with organization. Uh, this is a blessing uh, for, for me to have the opportunity to work with you and, and make a difference. So, very much looking forward to, yeah, to, to, to work with you and, and, and yeah, bring, bring the needle forward for, for African agriculture. So with that, uh, back to Scott, I hope, uh, Stella and Robert. Thank you. Scott, are you able to join now? Um, I do want to mention, though, that these, these folks here, the crop leads and the 
functional teams from Vera. That is all our in-kind support. You know, the, this is this is all um, you know Vera's in-kind support as, as as part of the contribution for this project. Um, so you know, you, you can see that Martine and Javier and Kushi and Scott. Can we hear you now? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That, that, I don't know what was going on. <laughs> um, they have full, full, full um, day jobs, and, and so uh, they'll be spending a proportion of their time on this project. Um, but and, and as will uh, the skills-based volunteers. That, that, so these these efforts, the large efforts from Bear, are largely in kind support through uh, their time and effort. So Scott, please uh, go on. I'll I'll get to your slide here. Okay. Thanks, and I apologize for the technical malfunction. I don't know what was going on, but. Uh, so a little bit about myself, um, I uh, did my PhD in plant breeding and plant genetics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, which is also where Stella did her PhD, so go Badgers. Um, and I uh, just recently joined uh, Monsanto, I was in an academic career for about the last 18, 19 years. I spent 10 years at Purdue University and then uh, 8 or 9 years at the University of Georgia, where I'm actually located now. Um, and I just joined Bayer last August. So when we talk about change management, I've been managing a change for the last year, <laughs> adapting from an academic career to, to uh, and working in industry, learning a whole new set of nomenclature, a whole new set of people, a new way of working, um, and just the scale of operation is so much different. So I'm, I'm managing a change of my own for the past uh, 10 or 11 months. I guess the thing I want to, 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 to mention, I look forward to working with Bukhar and, and Godfrey on the cowpea and, and soybean. Um, like Javier, I've also been involved with the CG centers my entire career, and it's been a it's been a great source of uh, it's been a great collaboration. It's been very productive. It's been very fruitful, and I hope I made a contribution to them. They've certainly uh, made a contribution to my career. Um, so even going back to my my graduate career, I worked on potato. We worked with the people at SIP in Peru. Uh, I worked on rice for decades with uh, people at Erie. Um, I've had a long-standing collaboration with people at Icrasat, working on pigeon pea and cow pea, uh, chick, uh, chick, pigeon pea, chickpea, and peanut. Um, most recently, an AID project on on, uh, on peanuts. Where we're doing a lot of work with the University of Georgia and then also with uh, groups in Senegal and Haiti. Um, worked on uh, common bean with the group at Seat. Contributed in a very small way to to cow pea. Uh, sequencing with uh, some of the people on this, this call, and Jeff Ellers is on the call, but Tim Close and the group at Riverside. Um, so I, I have grateful for this opportunity, and I'm, I'm very, very much look forward to working alongside Godfrey and, and Bukhar and the others, and learning, uh, and hopefully uh, be able to contribute in a small way. Wonderful. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, and thank you, Michael. I know he's dropped off, but it is very early in the morning for Michael. So uh, <laughs> when you have the chance to reach out to him, um, please thank him for, for coming. Um, so we are approaching this the, the, the third part of the program. Um, and I will pass uh, the, the moderating uh, back to Robert. Um, but, um, you know, we are excited to be here. We're excited to get started. This is our official kickoff, and, and so uh, we we will definitely be working uh, in smaller groups, getting to know each other as we proceed. Um, and uh, thank you again for continuing to join on. And right now, I think we're really excited to hear from IITA uh, on the scope of, of their program. So, Robert, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. So. As you mentioned, uh, uh, the code on the IT is at least the interview that we're we'll working on, and ourselves, of course, to the team. Uh, so, I thought of speaking on here with Pika on Cassava. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Robert, and uh, thank you for the um, opportunity to um, be part of this uh, program and work, work with um, uh, looking great forward to the the project. So um, yeah, I'm Peter Kaleko. I'm the head of the cassava breeding unit, and we really represent a very large team at IITA. Next slide, please. Um, 
Um, and the, the, the team, um, it, we, we were funded on a number of different projects, but our largest project is the Next Gen Cassava project. In recent years, we've been bringing together our team to meet as often as we can, but working together as a team really can be one of the main focal points of, I think, of this collaboration with, with Bayer. Next slide, please. Uh, IATA has cassava breeding programs across Sub-Saharan Africa. We work with the NARS in many different countries. Um, we, as you know, IATA has four different hubs. Um, we have the largest cassava breeding program based in Nigeria, serving uh, West Africa. We also have uh, the East Africa hub with uh, Edward Kanju leading uh, breeding programs in Uganda and Tanzania, and then we. Phineas Nataro Ahungo, working in, uh, based in Zambia, working in uh, Malawi and Zambia and many other countries in Southern Africa. And then we have the East Africa, uh, the Central Africa hub, which with the biggest focus in DR Congo. So we operate across Africa. Next, please. In Nigeria, we have a pretty we 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 have a number of different agroecological zones where we work. We have stations in Nigeria that care across these agroecological zones. We have collaborations with the NARS in neighboring countries. The cassava monitoring study done in 2015 has also given us a good idea of what varieties are out there and what our targets for replacement are. Next, please. And this has <clears throat> led um, partly through the <clears throat> impetus of uh, the Excellence in Breeding Program to uh, defining our gender responsive product profiles across the IITA hubs. This is just a generalized view of the four main product profiles, cassava for food security, which are processed products from cassava, which serve the largest number of people. There's cassava for industry, which is a developing market, but a very important one that also can be a, a, an important target for initial target for mechanization. We have cassava for improved nutrition, which is primarily biofortified cassava with enhanced uh, pro-vitamin A content. And then we have the fresh market cassava, which is le has historically less important in Nigeria, but very important in different parts of Africa. So for all of these product profiles, we have key traits, uh, required traits, especially disease resistance, virus disease resistance traits, and, um, and target levels. And one of our challenges is to actually estimate the markets and really to understand market segmentation better. And this is a place where working with Bayer can certainly be helpful to us. Next, please. So we have a system of trials uh, going from our seedling nurseries, because it's a clonal crop, going through our various multiplication stages all the way to the national performance trials. We have different traits we evaluate in these different types of trials, and we have uh, st uh, standard operating procedures for evaluating most of these traits. We also are working on high throughput methods to improve our evaluation of specific traits, testing things like NIRs, uh, UAVs. Uh, we're working on ground penetrating radar for non-destructive estimation of yield. So our phenotyping tools are advancing quite well, but of course there's much need to work on that more. Next, please. Um, and in particular, we've enhanced our work on uh, food product evaluation, consumer preference, sensory testing. This is a also a developing area, but it's really critical because the customer perception of our varieties really has a lot to do with their potential for adoption and, um, and also our ability to replace traditional varieties, which actually do serve many consumer preferences and needs. So this is an area that uh, has developed in, um, a lot in the last couple of years and, and has much more room to grow. Next, please. All of our data is integrated into a, a digital ecosystem 
called cassava base. It's now more generally called reed base. Uh, this is a system that's available for all for multiple crops, but um, it's cassava was really the pioneer crop to develop this system. Uh, this developed with BTI at um, based at Cornell University. We really have tools across all aspects of breeding management to address the different needs of breeding. This is also a way for us to monitor genetic gain. And um, we are, we're working with uh, excellence in breeding and a new um, bio, head of biometrics at IITA to really get a better handle on how we estimate genetic gain, which is, of course, an important metric for uh, looking at progress in breeding. Next. Yeah, and then our, we've also organized our trials and our decision-making processes into a stage gate system. Uh, we had our first product advancement meeting uh, earlier this year, which um, gave us a, a, first, um, a first try at how to present the data and how to bring in the larger team to um, uh, determine what products get advanced. This is also an area in development. Also, we have we now have IATA Go Seed and our partner seed company at uh, NRCRI in Nigeria, and similar initiatives in Tanzania to to link the breeding programs with the variety deployment process. And this is another place where we I think we can benefit tremendously from our interactions with Bayer to as to how to link the breeding programs with the actual. Uh, seed deployment systems. Next, please. Uh, yeah, great. And then out of the next gen cassava project, we do have our first product of genomic selection. We have different breeding methods, but genomic selection is one that we've been testing out to um, fully utilize both molecular and phenotypic data. Uh, this variety uh, is a uh, TMS 13F 1160P0004 is one that we really think is in a good position to be released, partly because it has stable high dry matter and high starch over, um, over it seems to be a year-round uh, phenomenon, and it, uh, it's a good target for replacement or enhancement of a variety that's commonly used, uh, TME419. It does seem to be good for both processed products and for industry. Um, as you can tell by its name, it's in need of a name and a marketing name. And that's one of our current challenges is how to name our varieties. And that's another place where maybe Bayer can help us. How do you um, create a brand around a variety that is recognizable and people want to engage with? So. Um, but this is one of our products that is in its advanced stage of product advancement. Next, please. And then in Tanzania, just one example of a product coming out of the hubs, Edward Kanju has developed some of the best germplasm for cassava brown streak disease resistance, which is really the key constraint in East and Southern Africa now. And this is where um, <clears throat> we, we really are um, targeting our breeding program to, to address the most important constraints. So also positioning this kind of germplasm to be able to serve in a number of countries is very important. And this is, um, so breeding also need, it needs to address current consumer preferences and needs, but it also needs to project into the future. So CBSD is not present in West Africa but it's something we need to be breeding for in West Africa. So how to, um, how to forecast uh, needs of varieties in the future is another key challenge for us. And next, please. Yeah, I'm just finishing up here. Um, so we have a large team. We really have over 200 people that work in cassava breeding, but we have different groups of people. So we have the IITA leadership uh, led by Robert Asiedu now. We have the new head of breeding, which happy to see for the first time today. We have our product management positions. So this is all important for lead going into the future. We also have many specialists that work with us um, 
who represent disciplines that are key and critical to breeding and how to work better with these specialists in the breeding program is another one of our challenges and opportunities. Next. Then we have the, the actual, we have the seed systems team, which is of course very important. And then we have the breeders who actually are in the technical aspects of selection. And uh, the next slide is the last slide with the uh, list of people. Um, and this is, includes um, uh, uh, newer scientists as well who have great potential for the future and how, how we all integrate all of these people together. Um, and then the final slide, uh, it's just these are the opportunities for collaboration and many of these are things that have already been highlighted by other speakers. Complement the modernizing of IIT breeding programs, building the business cases for cassava breeding pipelines, improving our product advancement process, linking breeding programs with seed production, and strengthening the interactions of our large cassava value chain team, so how we work together as a team, which I think is something that Bayer can really help us do very well. So um, with that, thank you very much. We really look forward to working with uh, the Bayer folks in, in the years to come. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to stay as late as we can. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Start in your own Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Anytime. Yeah. yeah. So please move to one is this possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So Ronnie, please go ahead. So dear uh, colleagues from Bayer and from IITA. I'm going to give you in a nutshell an overview about the uh, IT Musa breeding program and to set the scene straight away, look at the plate. The bananas which we are breeding for are not eating fresh. So we should get away from the ideas about the export bananas and dessert bananas. We're talking about plantains and we're talking about cooking bananas. Next slide, please. So the plantains which you find in the red circle basically are the starchy bananas at maturity, they're starchy, and they're only grown in the lowlands of Western Central Africa. And then in East Africa, in the highlands, so starting from 1,000 meters above sea level, we have the matoke bananas, so the cooking bananas, and the amshari bananas. So what this slide is not really showing is the following, that the matoke bananas will not grow in the lowlands. They cannot grow there. The plantains can grow in the highlands. Another point is the Amshari bananas are diploids. Look at the two letters, double A. So matokes are triploids, plantains are, are also triploids. So we'll be working with an end product which should be triploid or a diploid. Next slide, please. So the breeding work, work is going on in uh, three locations. Uh, in Nigeria at IT headquarters and in uh, Port Harcourt, where the IT breeding program started in the 1980s. That's in the lowlands, high humidity conditions, where plantains are really thriving very well. Then in the, uh, in the east, so again the yellow part, we have our biggest breeding operations in Uganda for the Matokes, and that's in a region where we have two rainy seasons and two dry seasons. It's rather cool. And then uh, to the blue one, we are working in a rather dry conditions for the Amshari bananas, but basically they are growing on, on hilly terrains, so they're getting in the mountains quite some rain, but farmers normally irrigate them with sur surface irrigation. Next slide, please. So, 
again, to set the scene, the bananas, which, uh, which are being imported in Africa, they're not growing in monocultures, so not in large fields. They are growing in a complex system where many varieties are being mixed. So it's not one single variety of banana or plantain, and they are mixed with other crops. So it's a complex farming system, and either they're grown close to the house in the so-called backyards, where there are, in fact, permanent, so you can find fields which are 100 years old, but if you go to the fields, they stay there for only for a couple of cycles. Now, some data, some da data economic data, Africa produces the bulk of the plantains in the world, so more than 55%. The rest of the plantains are being produced in Latin America. 3.2 million farming households depend on plantain, and the biggest producing countries are in West Africa, so Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, and we have, of course, DRC Congo. And another number, half a kilogram of plantains are being consumed per person in Cameroon and in Ghana. There are 120 different varieties. They're all coming from soma clonal variation because of the long-term long cultivation. Now, the, in East Africa, the the Amatoxin and Amshara is the only place in the world where they're being cultivated. You don't find them in Asia, you don't find them in Latin America, and 2.5 million farming households depend on this crop. And the majority of the bananas and Amatoxin are being grown around the Great Lakes of Eastern Africa. So don't get confused with the Great Lakes of, uh, of um, 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 Eastern Congo. My slide is gone, I don't see anything anymore. Okay, thank you very much. And so, in Uganda is the biggest consumer of bananas in the world, 0.7 kilograms per person per day, and we have um, more than 80 varieties of highland bananas being cultivated. Next slide, please. So, there's a big yield gap. So, what we, we have to aim for. So, for plantains, 4 to 12 tons per hectare per year, we can reach 35, 36 tons per hectare per year. For the matokes on the right side, current production depends depending where you are, 5 to 30 tons, we can reach 70 tons. And for the Amshari, it's 11 tons being achieved now, we can reach 60 tons. And by the way, that's a diploid, eh? it's possible to do, we have proven it. Next slide, please. Next slide, yeah. So the yield gap is due to basically two, two things. One of them is agronomy, and I'm not discussing agronomy today, uh, but are pests and diseases. And I will go through the first through the top four, because these are the ones which we really use in crossbreeding. And I start with, on the right side with Fusarium. So the Fusarium is a killer, it's a soy-born fungus, and now we hear a lot in the press about race four killing export industry in Asia and now also in Colombia. But in Africa, in fact, the, the plantains and matokes and the mshari are challenged by race one. And in fact, it is mshari which is succumbing to race one, plantain and matoka, they are resistant. Black cigatoka, the next slide on, on the right side, is a fungal leaf disease. It's global, and in the industry, plants are spraying to, clean, to keep the leaves clean, but in Africa, all the plants are being affected by this disease. And then we have on the left side, two soil-borne issues, nematodes and weevils. In fact, plants just topple when there's a heavy wind or even a heavy bunch, which is possible, they simply fall over. And then we have another range of other uh, challenges like bacterial wilts and some viruses, which for the moment are not part of our breeding program. Next slide, please. I need to explain briefly uh, that in banana, we are using different hybrid, uh, different uh, ploidy levels. And Briefly, we are crossing a triploid with a diploid for plantain and matoke. We are ending up with, a, with, in fact, progeny from different ploid levels, but most of them are either tetraploid or diploid, and rarely triploid, we obtain as well. So, we have to move on to create again a triploid uh, hybrid, and therefore we are crossing our tetraploids with another diploid, usually an improved diploid, and next slide, and from that cross of a tetraploid diploid, we are ending up with a triploid, and after evaluation, central evaluation, etc., multiplication evaluation, we end up with a hybrid which is available for distribution. But have a look at the seed production. On average, we have 0.1 to 22 seeds per bunch. Theoretically, we could achieve 6,000 seeds. So we have a problem with seed sets in banana. Yeah. Next slide. 
So to move on, we are, we are guided by the factor product profile, which we developed for the three types of bananas. We are supported by um, field books, a tracking system, which is tracking from the pollination to the seed extraction, to the tissue culture work, the nursery and the replanting. And that's all links to the Musa base. So uh, Peter just referred to, in fact, to our colleagues in, in Cornell who are running the Musa base as part of, of Musa breed, our uh, um, breed base. And we have some bioassays. For some uh, challenges, we don't have a bioassays, like for nematodes, but for Zigatoka and Fusarium and Weavers, we have one. Next one. And during the whole process, we are doing quality checks that we, that we are not mixing up our materials. So we are doing fingerprinting that we, we know what we are using, but what we are not applying it, but developing are in fact the QTLs, which we have for a whole range of parameters and also the GWAS, where we are now having strong information linked to the fruit size. And of course, in banana, one wants to have big fruits. Next slide, please. So close to the end now, we have delivered some um, hybrids, and it's going to show you um, how difficult it is. So on the left side, we have a plantain, which is re registered in Ivory Coast 2016. It's now also cultivated in Berlin, Togo, Malo, Burkina Faso. On the right side, you see in the picture on the far right of the right picture, our four uh, Naritas, one of the four Naritas which we are going to, um, to provide to the Tanzanian program. So it's a cooking banana. And the pita is a plantain. But look at the, the time we need it. It's between 17 and 27 years. It is due to three things. It's the inefficiency of breeding. It's about the weakness of the national programs. And it's about the repeated interruptions of funding. So next slide, please. So we have um, a very small team. Um, in fact, the top three we have, I'm not saying top three are the top best ones, but those top three are the breeders. So we have myself, Delphine Lama and Alan Brown. Delphine for Plantain, Alan Brown for Matok and Mshari. We are 100% engaged in this breeding program. The next level we have uh, the lady, Brigitte Wimana, is our molecular biologist, 100% on banana. So we have four people, international staff, on banana, full time. And the other three is all part time. So we have Flushan, the bioinformatician, for 20%. The gentleman in blue, Danny Coyne, 40%. And, and then we have George Mahuko for, for 10%. So uh, it's a very small team. And it's supported by uh, 35 hectares and about uh, 40 staff in the field. Next slide. And that's the last one. So uh, to do this job, we have a lot of subcontractors, especially supported through the uh, Bill Melinda Gates Foundation, and we have also USAID for plantain. And I'm not going to discuss all of them, but you see that the task of many of those subcontractors are linked to the pre-breeding or, in fact, dollar development. This, the middle column, we have a few of them linked, uh, like ITA and the Ugandan program, NARO, to, in fact, population improvements. And on the right side, our current major collaborators is Uganda and Tanzania, so Naro and Tari, they do the delivery of the hybrids. So, next slide, what do we expect from this collaboration? Um, the first thing I would say is the interaction with, uh, with Bayer, that we learn from them, and that they re recognize that banana is a very special case. It's a perennial, different ploidy levels, low seed set, and so on. So we need to work on faster uh, breeding new hybrids, and also, we have to start building an, an at IT a team. Uh, with just a couple of people, we cannot continue if you want to institutionalize banana breeding at IT. So with that one, I thank you very much for your attention. Um, Ronnie, so, Bupa, are you ready? Yes, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, I will try on uh, behalf of again of my colleagues uh, to give you a very brief uh, update of our activity of the status of our breeding program uh, currently. Next slide, please. Well, 
Next slide. It's up on my end, Bukhara. It might be a lag in Canada. Okay. Two main products. Okay. So uh, I will start before, before we, we start coming here. Uh, our breeding program uh, uh, is uh, targeting uh, no, uh, two main uh, uh, products that actually represent the four uh, product profiles that we developed and uh, also representing the six uh, uh, breeding pipelines or market segment that we have identified and that we are trying to implement. If I can, it's still not seeing here. <laughs> I don't see my slide. Or should I open the one that I have here? So, so basically, the first. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. The, okay. The first uh, set of uh, the product actually are. Uh, short and medium duration grain type uh, cultivar with medium and large uh, white uh, or brown grain resistant to striga, uh, bacteria blight, aphid and fungal foliar diseases and targeting mainly the Sahel and the Sudan savanna zone of West Africa representing 75% of the area under cowpea production. And the second set of uh, products are actually the medium and late maturing dual purpose cultivars uh, that have similar characteristics than the first group, but uh, they are targeting mostly the Guinea savanna uh, zone. Uh, so if you can move to the next slide, although I don't see it in your slide, in your desk. Are you there? Okay, now you are very, you are, I can see it now. Okay. Perfect. Good. Yeah. So, as uh, we are moving uh, from a threat driven uh, breeding approach uh, to a demand led breeding approach, uh, we started uh, through our that cowpea uh, buy-in project. Uh, we have started to understand better the market driven seed system value chain, uh, seen here in that slide. Uh, trying to move from the research organization uh, to the farmers and then from the farmers uh, to the consumer, trying to capture the challenges and the preferences of uh, all the stakeholders uh, to actually better ref refine our product profile so that we ensure that uh, whatever we uh, be able to produce in that project should be or in that program should be able to be adopted or find uh, its way in the uh, consumer side or in the production side. Next, please. Mm -hmm. Well, then maybe I should go back to my other side. So, in terms of uh, challenges uh, uh, in cowpea. Uh, insects are the first uh, uh, group of uh, uh, product or production constant uh, uh, factors that are even known uh, from the farmers. Even the first thing that you ask the farmers, they will be able to tell you that yes, we have, we don't grow cowpea or we grow cowpea, but the challenges are insects. Insects attack cowpea at the seedling stage, we have aphids. At the flowering stage, we have uh, flower chips. At the podium stage, we have uh, uh, we have pot soaking box, and at the storage during storage, we have weevils. We have also diseases uh, that include uh, mainly fungal and viral diseases, but also some bacterial, particularly bacterial blight uh, disease. In terms of parasitic weeds, uh, we have striga and electra that are also attacking. Uh, the crop, and in terms of abiotic stresses, we have, of course, drought, heat, and uh, low soil fertility. So during our, in our breeding program, I might not be covering it now here, but we have uh, made a kind of uh, substantial uh, progress in terms of, for example, identifying sources of resistance for aphid flower trips, and uh, you know that also that there is a recent uh, development of a Bt 
that are not used in IET beton. Colleagues in us are used for controlling the cold borer, that is Maruka. And in terms of parasitic bees, we have a strong uh, resistance for strike and electra that all we are trying to in include in our uh, breeding program. Next, please. So to just give you a brief uh, status of the size of our breeding programs, a few years ago we have uh, we are having about uh, if you see in the first uh, uh, table uh, the dark bottom IT we had about 50 to 60 uh, crosses per year, and uh, from over the year to over those two or three years we start to increase the size of our uh, our breeding program given that this is one of the recommendations of the BPAT and also from the colleagues from Bayer. So now we are generating about 150 to 170 uh, exactly uh, last year, uh, number of crosses per year. For the uh, f tools also we started about 15,000 uh, plants. Uh, currently we are handling uh, in our nursery up to 60,000 uh, K for those uh, different crosses that we are continuing. Next, please. We are also uh, moved from uh, 1.5 generation that we are having per year to currently uh, involve uh, about three generation per year. And uh, given that we substantially using a single seed descent uh, recently that we started adopting, then uh, we see that in our plan and our projection that within three years, we're supposed to go from uh, crosses to uh, initial testing. And uh, uh, this is really a big difference compared to what we were using before that will take us about for the same stage of uh, testing, we needed about uh, uh, five to six years. And during also this operation, actually, I didn't mention here, but we are using uh, 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 molecular tools that include mostly uh, QAQC for controlling the hybridity of our crosses and then uh, confirming them. And then also uh, some of the aspect for some threat, we are using for breeding. That is particularly for uh, uh, bacteria blight and uh, aphid, where we have a strong uh, uh, identify uh, uh, QTS. But uh, in general, uh, we are also strongly currently uh, been working with uh, EIB module three to really set up a full uh, uh, genotyping platform that can will really make us uh, to get a more uh, implement implementation of the molecular breeding. Next, please. Yes, from uh, this uh, opportunity, uh, it's really a wonderful opportunity that uh, we started with uh, the same uh, with Bayer that we thought, we think that really for the next uh, 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 this uh, phase or of the project, we're really looking forward uh, uh, to finalizing our basics, and mostly those are the operational protocols. And uh, really, we want to make some emphasis on uh, high throughput uh, phenotypings of some of the key threat, and uh, quality of threat uh, is really uh, of data is are really important for us. And uh, we mentioned also that. We should continue adopting mechanization on all of our operation and uh, field operation and others uh, post of uh, post field operation so that we uh, benefit for some of the uh, to really increase the quality of our, our data. And the second aspect that is really important for us is that is the opt optimization of our breeding pipeline. And uh, this is not only going to be on the basis of the organizational or the structure, also we need really to uh, make sure that uh, what uh, the number of population that we are handling or the number of uh, target that we are having should be able to uh, a good planning and a good uh, a system should be put in place that so that we cannot miss uh, the opportunity to be involved. And also we are after finalizing those those are really basic. We think that uh, uh, the next uh, step is really to uh, deploy the molecular breeding. That's, uh, we think about uh, really embarking in uh, genomic selection because we think that from now on at least we have a good data set, we have a good knowledge of our uh, germplasm, 
and uh, also we know uh, we have might be by that time uh, before the end of the next year i am sure we are going to have a good genotyping platform so that we can be really ready to go one of the aspects that also we wanted uh, to make sure that we don't miss that opportunity is really to operationalize uh, our state gate so we started uh, developing that state gate but this is time really to make it operational and uh, not uh, the least, but uh, the modernization, modernization will require also some infrastructure and uh, equipment. And I am very uh, pleased, excited, that expecting that uh, I will get uh, more help from uh, the side of there that we make sure that we really have uh, those expertises that can help us to uh, use those uh, key facilities that can be help us in uh, improving our phenotyping or improving our genotyping aspect of breeding. Next, please. Well, uh, we have uh, in Kaupi breeding, we have uh, several colleagues are contributing. Uh, just here to introduce uh, uh, those colleagues that are uh, contributing. We have several, uh, we have uh, two breeders, uh, additional breeders and geneticists. Uh, we have uh, entomologists uh, that are involved. We have seed system specialists. We have uh, agronomy system. We have uh, uh, agri-economic uh, scientists that are helping us, and also a gender specialist. Next, please. I don't see it here, but the next is supposed to be some of the colleagues from uh, other services that include uh, uh, GIS uh, support service. Uh, we have uh, a strong uh, link with uh, pathologist group and a virologist group that are helping us. And also recently we have a biometrician that are taking and started already working with us. Uh, I should not also forget to mention here that we have, we are using in the Kaupi the breeding management system for our database and Trusha is helping us. And then of course we are also uh, intensively use our genetic resources center. So next, please. Yes, in terms of partnership, we have a strong partnership with uh, at least uh, four uh, national programs that are mostly for Burkina Faso, Ghana, Mali, and Nigeria, where we have uh, a common uh, project. We have several common projects on Kaupi. But also we have uh, developed another set of colleagues that are joining us this, from this year, from uh, Cameroon, uh, Niger, Senegal, and Togo in uh, the, our testing program. So we have a testing network that we're going to deploy, and we hope that at least we have more uh, than just those 12 that we are having now across the countries. So we are hoping to have more than at least uh, 30 to 40 uh, sites for our testing site. In terms of with, uh, the advanced research institution, we are working very uh, closely with the University of California, Riverside, and also other CG. We have uh, ICRISAT and SEAT through the AVISA project. We are working really to improve our programs, uh, working together. And also, of course, I didn't mention it here, but with IEB, uh, IEB that we really find uh, a lot of support also that we are continuing to in that modernization aspect. I think that's all. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And now, uh, please, please, go ahead. Bossy, you will hear me, please. Chuck, if you are muted. Can you hear me? I'm back now. Hold on. Uh, Bonfu, are you ready? Okay. Stella, can we please go back to Asaka Nogi? Yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I know your slides. Um, something that you can get my slides to show. Okay, okay. Asaka, go ahead. I can't see the slides. Oh. Hmm. This is Godfrey. Uh, yeah. Godfrey, hold on. Okay. Can, you, can you see your slides now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
el ego. You still can't see the media quite a delay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the, the YAM slides are up uh, or are folks not able to see? Yes, uh, our site is not able to see from our Ouija. He's connecting from our Ouija. He can't see. Yeah, yes. I can't. Hi. Okay. Maybe you can I start from what I'm um, from my computer and maybe you can. Uh, Okay, yes. go ahead. Uh, you talk from your computer. You have the outlook on your breathing. Go ahead. Yes, uh, yes, yes. So, uh, thank you very much and sorry for this uh, interruption. And I'm uh, Masrat and uh, for the uh, young breathing uh, program IT. It is a very small program, but uh, we are also doing some um, good job. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to share the overview of the unbreeding uh, at IIT and I'll try to uh, talk about the brief uh, uh, overview of the YAM in Africa and the breeding program and our breeding program design and the team and then the excitement with this opportunity. Please next. So uh, the of, uh, yam in Africa is uh, one of uh, a key crop, and uh, from the 2018 FOA data, about 80 million tons production, about 8.5 million hectare, and it can generate to a value up to 14 billion, and it is it's a lot of uh, uh, social cultural uh, value of the yam, but there is a huge yield gap. Uh, the potential can go up to 60 tons and achievable up to 32, 40 tons, and the actual pharmacy is about um, 10 tons. Uh, when we see the, the next slide, please. When we see the, the, the yam potential for seed uh, business, if we take the average of uh, about the Nigerian 5 million hectare uh, uh, production and um, 10, thousand plants per the lamp operation so and the seed price nowadays can be up from 50 to 80 uh, 500 naira and if i take the average of 80 naira and with this calculation so the gross seed market value at 80 percent of the total area if i consider only for the nigeria market it can go up to 7 billion us dollar and from our uh, st study there is about eight 58% farmers outsource seed, and the seed lot turnover on average is about 3.5 years, and we have about two to seven years farmers looking for new seed lots. But we have a longer average uh, variety life in Nigeria, especially. It, it's about 10.5 or literally 11 years. And uh, in all over West Africa, we have about 4.5 million households and uh, that grow yam and about 30 million farming population depend on yam and we estimated about 300 million uh, 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 consumers so the next and the yam breeding program um, the next slide uh, starts i think from early 1970s there are some uh, uh, quite some people involved uh, I think uh, Dr. Acedo, the, the father of young breeding program, and now I'm currently uh, leading the, the breeding units. So we follow the centralized um, approach where we operate from headquarters in um, Ibadan, and we have uh, two uh, as hubs. So we also have uh, activities here in Abuja across Nigeria, and we heavily use the national programs in Nigeria, Benin, and Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire through the current uh, pro, uh, project support from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with Africa I Am Project. You can see from the graph, the, 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 uh, our trial locations across uh, West Africa in 2019. And in IT, we target two species, the white yam, Rotundata, and the uh, uh, water yam, the Ascoria lata. And so far, uh, about 25 direct or IT-derived variety released in West Africa. 
that is about uh, 14 of, uh, yeah, it, yes, I think there's more than this n number being released in, uh, in, in West Africa. So the next uh, slide, please. In the breeding design, especially, we uh, have four aspects of uh, we are dealing with. The first one is about the environment delineation for the young. And with help of the GIS team, we identified or defined seven uh, TPEs. And then uh, we also uh, looked at with uh, support from EIB with the market um, segmentation for the young breeding program. And we identified two market segments, the whole fresh tuber consumption process, the uh, uh, yam products. And based on this, uh, we also developed some uh, uh, products for our target industry product profiles, where we have the early uh, maturing legs slightly depend on staking the white yam and the intermediate and late uh, maturing uh, white yam suitable for both fresh and processed markets. And the third uh, product profile is uh, the water yam especially focusing on anthracnose resistance and suitable for both the fresh and processed uh, uh, markets. So uh, having this uh, product profile, we also developed a benchmark for the improvements where we can have a kind of uh, um, a starting goal where, where we can have a matrices to ensure that uh, the program is uh, delivering as uh, uh, expected. So the next slides and having this all then we develop we are following this uh, the, the the young breeding the value stream where we start uh, crossing currently <clears throat> we are uh, in one cohort we go up to 95 uh, parents and it's uh, it's about the flow of our uh, uh, materials uh, from and we annually can go up to 120 crosses and cross 100 progenies we manage and uh, it may it will take about uh, eight to nine years to release the variety in uh, in, in, the, in the program so the next slide uh, please in this one to show the germplasm plasm development pipeline where we have uh, the market segments are for the breeding pipeline and then the, 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 the distribution of our uh, testing uh, uh, the materials at different stage of the breeding program. Uh, for our priority is the, the white yam, especially for the intermediate and late uh, maturing where it's our priority and also uh, share about 50% of the, the markets. And the second priority is for the uh, water yam, where we have all um, the, uh, materials at different stages of our um, testing, including the current product. But we recently defined early and uh, less likely depend on staking, uh, which is our third priority. But we have some materials at stage two, early uh, 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 stage two uh, uh, evaluation, where we don't have some existing products to promote. In the next slide. So our major uh, challenge in the breeding uh, of, of yam is yam is multi-species crop. So economically, we have about 11 important crops. Eight of them are grown in Africa. In IT, as I mentioned before, we only target two: the white yam and the water yam. Multiple ploidy also another challenge, and there's also we have high heterozygosity. And the main uh, uh, problem, especially when it comes to breeding, is the complex uh, flowering because the crop uh, behave both dioecious and the monoecious flowering, but mostly uh, dioecious and uh, shy flowering. And then uh, the synchronization of the flowering, especially in the, in the crossing block, is some of our challenge. The length cropping uh, cycle and the climbing growth habits and no multiplication ratio, especially to obtain uh, uniform planting material to scale our uh, uh, testing and uh, breeding. And we also uh, uh, face the high phenotypic plasticity, especially the intraplant variability uh, uh, within, uh, within plot variability because of the, the, the sprouting and also the quality of planting material when we are not using the whole tuber that reduce the breeding, the accuracy in the breeding and um, 
uh, phenotyping trials. But in general, we, uh, we are making some significant progress, but there is a, a limitation in terms of the breeding and the uh, seeds uh, technology, as well as capacity, especially to address all the, the target population of environments um, to cover all. So these are some of the, the limitations uh, we are, we are uh, facing. The next slide um, is with the small team. Uh, I've not uh, mentioned all the, um, the names, but I try to mention some of these uh, areas. We have two projects in the breeding and one in seed. We are molecular breeder. We have agronomists, physiologists, uh, we have also research technicians, pathologists, and food scientists and uh, economists. Some of uh, our colleagues who are not full time, but uh, they are part of their time. And we also uh, collaborate with the Gene Bank to uh, access some of the materials. In addition to that, uh, we all heavily depend on the national partners, especially in Nigeria in um, Ghana, in Benin, and uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire with the, the, the current um, uh, Africa YAM project. And for the next slide, please. Especially where our excitement or the expectation with this uh, opportunity, the YAM uh, team in general is curious about the potential that lies ahead, especially access to new tools, methods and especially uh, the clever uh, way of thinking to modernize our breeding program when it comes to the market intelligence and matrices to for measuring success and uh, more integration of no no breeding tools we also uh, uh, look forward for the recognition and the facilitation for partnership that enhance the young uh, breeding program impact in in general so thank you very much. This is what I want to share with you. Thank you very much, Nasha. So um, can I say can go to Godfrey to get that? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Godfrey. Yes. yes. You are all now. Please go ahead. All right. Next slide, please. Uh, I'm going to give uh, a brief overview of uh, the Serbian breeding program. Uh, next slide, slide please, uh, Stella. Yes, uh, Serbian uh, production in Africa is actually uh, the fastest growing crop uh, over the last uh, 20 years. Uh, this is mainly because of the growing demand in, uh, for animal feeds, uh, the poultry, uh, the pork, dairy, and uh, the agriculture industries. And also, you know, the urbanization moving from urban uh, areas to, to town, so it's like consumption of uh, edible vegetable oils and protein is actually gone up. Uh, so been also very important for uh, the cropping system, uh, rotation with the cereals. Uh, on average, it fixes about uh, between uh, 40 to 150 kgs of nitrogen per hectare, thereby it reduces the nitrogen cost for the next season. But then one also the most important factor is that uh, the soybean is actually a, a cash crop. It uh, gives decent income uh, to the farmers. Uh, we talk about, uh, you know, the staple crops, but one of the major issues as a person who actually grew up from the uh, village as a son of a business uh, farmer, you know, I know having cash is very important. You know, it will enable the farmers actually to send their kids to school, thereby actually gradually empowering their, their, their kids. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Okay, I, I can use uh, I can use uh, the slides I have. So, if you look at uh, soybean, uh, we also have, uh, if you look at the soybean uh, stability map and the active soybean breeding programs in Africa, you find that the IITA has uh, two breeding stations, one in Nigeria and the other one in Zambia, Lusaka. We also have uh, 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 national programs, actually there are mainly three national programs actually involved in soybean breeding. Uh, that is uh, the breeding program in Ghana and also the breeding program in Ethiopia and Makerere University. Uh, in Africa, outside South Africa, 
we do have one seed company only actively involved uh, in breeding program, uh, that is Seedcorp Zimbabwe. So if you look at the stability map and the number of breeding programs which are actually active in terms of soybean breeding, we are very few uh, in, in the soybean uh, research industry. So IITA covers most of this area and it's quite a lot of work for us to, to cover all these areas. So what we actually have done is that we know the target environment. We also know the market segments. With that, we have come up with the, the product profiles uh, of the varieties we want to, to develop. The product profiles are like the destination, where you want to go, what you want to, to give the farmers. And uh, the clients for the product profiles are many. Some of them, they include uh, the seed companies also, which don't have breeding programs, and the national programs, which don't have uh, breeding programs in soybean. So the overall objective of, of the soybean breeding program is actually to increase the rate of genetic gain in the farmer's field uh, by having consistent variety turnover based on the product profiles and sound variety replacement strategy. So it's not just like uh, we actually just producing varieties, the farmers. We do have a product profiles. We do have a defined destination where you want to go with the breeding program. Next slide. Uh, if you look at uh, the breeding uh, and product delivery process and the teams involved, we use uh, the stage gate uh, breeding process. Uh, one, we actually have uh, two, set, two kind of uh, processes. One is the product development and the other one is the product deployment. So all the product development, the major work streams actually involve a uh, gem plasma leverage, uh, then the trade identification, uh, the screening also, and then the breeding population development. What we have done is actually to have a central place to actually do our crosses, and that is in Nigeria, in Ibadan. So we do have a central place, we do all our crosses, and then from there, we actually distribute those crosses, the different, uh, some will come, actually come to, to Zambia. We also do line selection, and then the variety trials, uh, these are actually doing through the progressively from the premium variety trials, advanced variety trials, but you also do the CRB international trials and also the pan-African variety trials, and you actually do the coordination of the breeding programs. Recently, we've started to do the genomic selection with the University of Illinois. So the teams involved in the breeding program are, you know, we have two breeders, myself and Abush in Nigeria, and you also have people involved, the trace uh, in the molecular breeding, uh, which is uh, Melaku, and also have pathologists, uh, Juliet and Ajua in Mozambique, Juliet is in Zambia. And you also use the breeding management system database, which is actually, we have help from Trusha. But we also have uh, a number of technical teams behind us who are actually helping us to, to work in the field and, and do the work in the field. And then on the product deployment exception, where we have to look at the market and the agronomy and the seed system, we also have a, a team working on that. This is mainly the agronomist and uh, uh, the seed system people also. And also we do have uh, uh, people who are actually working on the markets, trying to look at the impact of soybean uh, research or soybean uh, production uh, within uh, the, the small water farming community. So we do have uh, uh, Stephen Bowen in Mozambique, Alpha Kamara uh, in Nigeria, and also Kenon and uh, Malita. These are the six system people. And on the market, the impact, we do have Sika and Areka working on that. But then on that also, we are actually working with a number of companies, organizations, the CRB Innovation Lab, uh, the seed companies, and the national programs. For now, we actually see, for the Pan-African Variety Trials, we started in one country, but now we're actually moving into 21 countries. This is actually the beauty of breeding. This is actually, it's actually sort of the beauty of breeding, because, you know, it's like a, a breeder is probably the only person who can actually hold a uh, seed, a packet, a variety which can change the whole world in one end at some point during the breeding process before you actually expand it or before you multiply it. Next slide, please. And then uh, uh, we do have uh, the gem plasm leverage. It's one of our major uh, activity uh, in terms of uh, developing breeding populations that delivers diversity and the uh, adaptability. Because we do have produ I mean, production challenges like drought, uh, leaf disease like rust, shattering, lodging, and small seeded. So when you're actually making our crosses, we're actually looking at uh, how can we actually uh, uh, come up with varieties which can actually do better uh, under these conditions. So we actually have materials coming from Colombia. We have IHA germplasm, 
and you have also materials coming from the African Institute and also from Australia. So these materials, if you put together, they actually bring new values. Uh, they bring seed yield, uh, the size, the lodging resistance, maturity, adaptation, stability, and the promiscuous nodulation. And also, it's like recently, uh, we have materials coming from Colombia, uh, the panorama varieties, which actually have introduced in West Africa. They are a beauty to see them in the field. These are actually the game changers, actually, for us in terms of varieties uh, for Africa. They're actually doing very well for in West Africa. That uh, we will be able to use them as parents for, for, for our breeding program. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in, in terms of uh, IITS, we have been uh, 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 breeding scorecards. We have released varieties uh, up to 101 varieties up to now, and most of these varieties actually were released in, in West Africa. Uh, recently, we have released varieties uh, in uh, Zambia, uh, two varieties in Zambia, Kafu and Mumbeshi, and we've also released varieties uh, in Ghana. It's called uh, uh, Fever. This is actually one variety where we actually look at the traits in terms of protein, in terms of oil, and the farmers they actually really like it. It really fits. In, in the product profiles which we have developed. So this, this variety was actually released last year. So these are some of the varieties which we have released. So in total, we have released over 101 varieties. Where you see there are very few varieties released from IIT, these are the areas where the private sector is quite active. So IIT varieties there, uh, we, we, we actually sort of give the opportunity to private sector to release those varieties. Next slide. So, in terms of uh, continuous improvement, uh, our breeding program is actually is one of the breeding programs which has actually managed to do mechanization uh, in terms of mechanical planting. We managed to get a, a mechanical planter, I mean, a planter from uh, uh, Montando, now Bear. Uh, they donated the planter through the University of uh, Illinois. Uh, you, know, you know, using mechanical planting is a beauty in the field. If you look at the, the plots when they establish themselves, they're quite uh, good. You know, manual planting and mechanical planting are quite different. Uh, if you use manual planting, uh, you know, the germination sometimes is not very good. Uh, the, the, the germination, the establishment of the materials is not very good. But if you use a mechanical planter, you know, the difference between mechanical plant and manual planting is like day and night. I don't think, uh, I, I don't want to go back to mechanical planting. It was like, uh, it was our first time uh, the, this season to use a, a mechanical planter to do our trials with. And you know, it's like the way management of it, it's, uh, it's, it's quite nice. And also you actually get better, better heritability if you use a, a mechanical planter compared to what we have been using. So we actually got uh, three planters and we're actually distributing some of the, these planters to uh, Malawi and also in Mozambique. We are trying to get another plan for, for the operations in Nigeria. Next, next slide, please. So, what are the opportunities uh, uh, of uh, collaboration with Bayer and IIT? Uh, we are looking at a genomic selection. It's our start for us to do genomic selection. We think the breeding program now is ready for genomic selection. We have done a lot of conventional uh, selection for the past uh, five years, we have actually put our breeding program in, 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 in order for us to start genomic selection. So it's actually a, a start for us to think about going into genomic selection. We have started with the University of Illinois, but it will be good for us to expand it with Bayer if it's possible. We are also looking at uh, the other traits like Roundup Ready. Uh, we, we don't know. You know, it's like every time I look at the management of the farmers, uh, we are made up challenge for the farmers. Is it better for us to have those traits if it's uh, acceptable for the farmers also to get those traits for them to be able to, to increase their yields. We're also looking at uh, deploying our breeding, our, our breeding schemes aligned with the product profiles and selection criteria. This is actually mainly to do with modeling. You know, it's like a breeding has changed, breeding has moved uh, from conventional modeling is now part of the breeding program. It will be good for us to understand or to use the modeling facilities which bear has for us to be able to use to, to improve our breeding schemes, which we can align with our product profiles. We are also looking at uh, using some of the XPVP lines uh, for, for the tropical environments, if Bayer is with those lines, so that we can actually increase in terms of JPLAS leverage. We have more materials which we can actually use in the tropicals if we can actually get JPLAS from, from Bayer, which are now uh, XPVP lines. 
Uh, we also want to, to look forward to developing uh, and deploying a phenotyping strategy to increase our health stability. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, challenges we have. We have managed to do mechanization. We are also trying to bring in uh, new equipment uh, for us to be able to, 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 to do a high throughput phenotyping. If we can probably use the 3D imaging as, uh, facilities, if Bayer can also uh, support that with. Uh, we also think of, uh, you know, it's like uh, our breeding mainly has been uh, just uh, uh, parent selection, looking at yields and looking at other traits without looking at the nutritional uh, quality of, 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 of the traits like protein and oil. So we think it's time for us also to have a facility where we can actually look at those traits at the breeding level uh, through selection uh, rather than to look at them at the final, as the, as, at the final end of the breeding process. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of uh, collaborators uh, uh, with us uh, in, in, in the in the shaping breeding program. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Yes, uh, for us to be able to do uh, this way, we do have uh, a lot of uh, uh, partners, uh, the national partners, especially for the soybean international trials. We do have uh, partners in Benin, uh, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya. Malawi, Mozambique, Nigeria. So uh, there are many. And uh, with the Pan-African variety trials, we're actually covering 21 countries. That's a, a, a lot of work to do. Uh, we also have uh, private companies. The private companies, normally, they actually do our advanced trials and our SEB, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, the SEB international trials. We do have CITCOP, CITCOP Nigeria, CITCOP, CITCOP uh, Zimbabwe. Okay, this is the last slide. So we actually want to thank uh, the SEB in, uh, Innovation Lab uh, IITA and uh, USID for funding the Serbian breeding program. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So we'll go to the final one with uh, the Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are you yes. Go ahead, please. Yeah, where, where is the, uh, the slide? Uh, next slide. Hello, we'll advance it. Oh, okay. Um, I would like to say that uh, MAIS has uh, really a strong team of scientists uh, which are working <clears throat> with dip different disciplines, you know, uh, working with us. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, based yes, on it's, what like I have, it's just yeah, like Maze, yeah, maize has uh, really emerged as a, a major staple food crop uh, in West and Central Africa uh, um, since the 1960s, primarily because of. Um, the uh, high rate of adoption of improved varieties uh, coupled with uh, use of fertilizer, uh, better uh, management practices and uh, favorable policy. The crop uh, has been a, a major source of uh, uh, nutrients and, and also food during the hungry season as well as uh, income for the farmers. Uh, maize is in fact a primary crop uh, for small and medium uh, seed companies, which is uh, driving their uh, uh, investment. Next, please. Yeah, in spite of it is uh, uh, sprayed very rapidly in West and Central Africa, its uh, productivity level is, is uh, still low. Uh, ranging between uh, 1.5 to uh, 2.5 uh, tons per hectare, uh, which is uh, due to uh, the abiotic stresses, diseases, a parasitic plant, and uh, uh, insect pests. Um, these constraints, these the specific combination of uh, these constraints. Um, has been targeted in our breeding program, you know, to uh, generate varieties that uh, have better performance uh, 
for uh, each uh, production zone. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. I can say from my uh, slide, I could say that IIT Mesa has a long history of uh, presence in West and Central Africa and also partnership since the uh, 1970s. Our breeding program used two uh, Nigerian composites which were developed under the uh, African Union project and cross examine you know, with uh, uh, several germplasm which were introduced from uh, diverse sources to uh, generate uh, populations which have been used for uh, increasing yields and uh, protecting the environment and also enhancing resilience as well as the nutritional quality. We have uh, targeted four uh, maturity classes, extra early, early, intermediate and late, uh, which are uh, targeted for specific agroecological zones. And we have uh, test locations that uh, represent the major uh, agroecological zones and our breeding program operates from uh, uh, Nigeria, so I can say, you know, Nigeria is a microcosm of uh, uh, all the agroecological zones in, in West and Central Africa. Uh, if you look down uh, at, at the map the below, we have uh, extensive network of uh, testing sites that have been established over, over the years with our partners where we uh, test our products. Next, please. Uh, our breeding program has been anchored on uh, a strong collaborative framework and works with uh, research and development partners as well as uh, policy makers to uh, develop and de deploy uh, a variety of different uh, types of varieties, you know, to uh, farmers. This is a type of uh, collaborative framework that we have um, uh, for, for, for maize in, in IITA. Next, please. I just want to describe the evolution of the maize improvement program in IITA. Uh, during the early phase, uh, uh, the research primarily focused on uh, establishment of uh, disease screening facilities and, and also uh, protocols to develop uh, disease resistant varieties, which uh, uh, catalyzed the uh, process of um, uh, adoption, the spread of maize varieties in West and Central Africa. Um, in the uh, second phase, the focus has uh, been on uh, the establishment of screening facilities for uh, abiotic stress tolerance, drought, heat, and nutrient use efficiency, and uh, which allowed us to also shift our emphasis from uh, specific stress tolerance to multiple stress tolerance. And at the same time, we have also concentrated on developing marketable and producible hybrids uh, that are uh, attractive to small and medium-sized seed, com seed companies. We have uh, used molecular tools for breeding efficiency and to a greater extent to uh, redefine and also refine our uh, heterotic groups. In the current phase, we are uh, planning to implement product profile-based breeding uh, to accelerate the rate of genetic gain using you know, uh, efficient breeding methods and mainstreaming uh, proven tools. And we'd like to also focus on protecting the gains that we have made over the years 
uh, by incorporating uh, multiple types of uh, genetic defenses against fall army or and other emerging diseases, and also focus on specific traits that are really valued by small and medium seed companies to reduce cost of uh, uh, seed productions. These changes that occurred in IIT have been driven you know, by uh, many um, uh, projects which were, uh, by, which were funded by the various agencies. And these um, projects have not only contributed to the evolution of science in the IIT maize breeding program, but also uh, contributed a lot to the establishment and expansion of uh, our partnerships. Next, please. IITS maize uh, uh, breeding program uh, it has not focused only on uh, product development, but also on uh, uh, product testing in partnership with uh, the national program and also private sector partners. We have been uh, funneling, you know, elite germplasm, uh, stress resilient, nutritious, and other germplasm to partners through uh, regional trials. I'm presenting just a, um, a summary of the results of uh, the uh, what happened recently in one of the projects. And as you can see, you know, we uh, there has been a, a significant uh, uh, increase in uh, terms of. Uh, sets of trials requested by our partners for testing from 2007 to uh, 2014. And, and thereafter, you know, the requests and the testing have uh, remained um, steady. Next, please. These regional trials have been invaluable sources of uh, uh, open pollinated varieties and also hybrids for uh, uh, further testing in national performance and on-farm trials, which are uh, undertaken you know, by our partners. And um, uh, recently, starting from 2007 to 2019, we have quite a number of uh, varieties and hybrids which uh, are nutritious and also resilient uh, that were uh, uh, released. Uh, by the national agricultural research systems and also uh, seed companies. Next, please. To promote the uh, uh, access of these varieties by uh, farmers, we supply breeder seeds of um, uh, open pollinator varieties and also your know, hybrids, uh, 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 open, I mean, parents of hybrids and also uh, open pollinator varieties. And these uh, 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 breeder seeds have been used you know, extensively by our partners to uh, produce uh, certified seeds. So I'm presenting on the left-hand side the uh, uh, productions that had occurred in uh, uh, Ghana, Mali, Nigeria, uh, and Benin from 2007 to 12, 2019 for stress resilient uh, varieties. And also in Benin, uh, in Ghana, Mali, and uh, Nigeria for nutritious maize varieties on the right hand side. In both cases, you know, there has been a steady increase in terms of uh, the production of seeds, uh, uh, certified seeds of uh, uh, the uh, released varieties, and also the area that that ha that has been covered, you know, through these uh, certified seeds. Next, please. ITMS program. I just want to uh, indicate that uh, uh, has a long history and and uh, had. Uh, uh, an impact uh, which uh, was uh, documented by Alena et al. in 2009. 
and the number of varieties increased uh, from 1 to 72 in the late 1980s and 1990s and uh, these varieties which were released 67% uh, of them originated from IITA and the adoption of uh, uh, the released improved varieties has uh, uh, increased the annual uh, land area by 2% and productivity by 3.5%. And the area which, uh, that, which was uh, reported at the time that was covered by improved varieties, uh, specifically coming from IIT, uh, was 43%. And the joint effort of the NARS and IIT really co contributed to uh, lifting a lot of people uh, out of poverty. Uh, with uh, regard to the opportunity that I am looking at working with uh, Bayer, I know Javier, I met Javier in uh, Mexico when, during the uh, 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 CRP review, and uh, I'm expecting to uh, uh, benefit you know, from his knowledge and experience. Uh, in our uh, breeding program uh, with regard to mechanization of all our field operations. You know, our field operations are, are predominantly manual, and I hope, you know, we, uh, with the support to get with, with Bayer, you know, we'll be mechanizing our field operations. And I'm also expecting to uh, um, get uh, 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 the feedback on how the uh, private sector does a variety replacement process. This is becoming, you know, critical, you know, in the, uh, in, in the CG center. So uh, I, I'm sure we will learn a lot from uh, the experience they have had, you know, in the private sector. And also the experience uh, to accelerate the impact of IIT's maze, uh, how should we what type of modalities should we put in place with the private sector so that, you know, the impact of uh, the maize program in, in, in IIT is greater. And we are also expecting to uh, learn a lot and uh, benefit from uh, the experience uh, uh, Bayer has in terms of integration of molecular data with uh, phenotypic data to accelerate the rate of uh, genetic gain uh, from uh, selection, and I, um, I'm sure we will also benefit from uh, uh, buyer to um, uh, from their experience about how we can ensure protecting the genetic gains that we have made over the years. Uh, uh, you know, um, through breeding, so that you know we can at least confront the unexpected occurrences of pests and diseases and also climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Abele. So colleagues, we have listened to the presentations uh, from ITA and then before that we have the introductions of colleagues at there. Um, it's been a very exciting day, we've learned a lot. Uh, we've come to actually the end of the time allotted. So in terms of further discussion, uh, we'll have the contacts of all the colleagues who are online available, so please feel free to engage in further discussion. And any uh, topics that come up, we can all engage in a, a question and answer if necessary. So I will take this opportunity to thank everyone for their excellent contributions to make this a very great day. Thanks uh, especially to Stella for coordinating things from uh, their side and making this so important. From our side here, uh, I will say thank you and uh, we'll bring the meeting to a close unless there are any other uh, bits of information from your side. Stella, over to you. 
No, thank you so much, Robert. And thank you so much to the IAT scientists for preparing these wonderful presentations. It's been such a pleasure and we look forward to working with all of you um, as we kick off this uh, new project. So thank you, Robert. Yeah. And um, thank you, Kathy. Uh, <laughs> and the staff there at IATA getting everything uh, together. Thank you so much. Okay, so bye bye, everyone. Um, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.